Stratford. What's up? $300 Keurig. Three Gout Star Crystal Variety. Bill Brasky in the house. You are all legends. Big ups, everybody, for stopping in. And yes, today, 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 the new series. Taking a break with Densey Scrolls. Densey Scrolls are valuable. The sacred text. We're taking a break, though. We're doing more of a different, a more different variety style content. <laughs> we are diversifying as we speak. Everybody in here. <laughs> and, you know, you thought you came here for Ask the King, but you didn't. Today, you came here for DSP's Inbox. Right? Now, DSP's Inbox is the thing that happened before Ask the King. So, in true WPIG fashion, we're going even farther back than you might have expected. <laughs> And I hope you're ready for that fully. Nice geography rivals there. Three turkey. A nice callback to what happened yesterday on the stream. As we watch Phil play Bully. That is... That was yesterday. That was very, very fun to watch. All right? So, quick business style announcements. We do have one new card to show you. Not made by me, by the way. This was submitted on the Discord. Make sure I get, can give the person a full shout out. I want to make sure we get it. Yep. People here on the stream tonight, and we got about 20 likes. It'd be great if we could do better than that. <laughs> uh, I aim for 100 likes on every stream. If you could do me the favor, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you for that. Black and white, Catley Quinn. Big ups, nice pull there. This card is from Pig Data. It is enjoy the East Coast Customs. Stick with the custom ball tap. All right, the customized. It's in the pool right now. That's a slick looking card, and you know it is because I didn't make it. That is in the pool right now. That's what you want right there. East Coast Customs. Custom ball top. Beautiful design there. Thank you so much for that, Pig Data. You're a legend, dude. <laughs> That's in the pool now, so good luck to you. All right, last thing before we get to it. Last business style announcement, I promise. Last business style announcement. So to make it, you know, more fun for all of us, hopefully, uh, we're going to be counting a few things. And... um. What we're going to be counting is, well, we're always going to be counting um, the, ball, the, the bells, right? So I'm going to reset all these numbers. This does not count. Here's the bells. So here's, if he says bottom line, we do this. Okay, that's one. We, that, that's just standard. That's bog standard, right? We don't know what bog standard means, but that's bog standard. We also have, if he says, this is funny, this is hilarious, something like that, we have this. Not funny. Different not. All right, so that's the bog standard. We always have those all the time, right? No problem with those. We do also have a new counter, which was suggested on the Discord as well. This is a berate counter, okay? So berate counter is when he berates the person that asks the question in some way. Um, this is not the final version of this, but this is how we're going to count that for today. Fuck this guy. Okay, that's the berate counter, okay? The berate counter is there, and that's when he berates it. Next, B-rate. Exactly, B-rate. We also have a literally counter. So here's the literally ha, counter. Ha, 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 ha. That's the literally counter. You'll know from his ha-ha laugh, that's the literally counter. And we also have a when he flashes the questions paper counter. All right? So this is that. It's like origami. Okay? So I'm going to reset all those, but that is the things we're going to be counting for today. And we'll see. If it turns out they're all lame and they don't happen enough, like, we can always change them. You know, it's not... We're not exactly changing the world here with our counters of berating or not berating, right? <laughs> I mean, we kind of are, though, you know? Kind of. I'm going to get back... Let me put all the numbers back to zero before we start. I don't want to have any inconsistencies in the history books, okay? It's not going to happen on my watch, all right? It's not going to happen. Okay. And we make sure we put all the B-Ray counters to zero. And at the end of this fun trip down all these Ask the Kings, we can see how many times he said each of those things forever. It's going to be remembered forever. Can you believe it? All right, we're done. So let's get it. This DSP's inbox episode. You see the date there, 2010, 13 years ago, is the first time he asked, got questions from his lovely viewers 
And this is it. Are you ready? Strap yourselves fucking in. Oh, by the way, uh, that being said, by the way, tomorrow is on uh, 11.30 a.m. with Hate Army in the house. All right, so business style announcements done. It is time to start the fun. Are you ready for what is about to come to you today? DSP's inbox. We're going to watch the first two episodes. Let's get it. What's up, everyone? It's DSP here. Uh, just hanging out today. Uh, and this is my first edition of... DSP's inbox. Um, okay, if you were paying cool. attention a couple weeks ago in one of my channel updates, I actually gave out a new email address, DSP inbox hot. at hotmail.com, where I said from time to time I would actually be reading those emails and answering some of them in a video series. And okay. uh, this is part one. So without further ado, let's get So let's enjoy the posing and the camera angle and the legs. <laughs> I mean, we can't get past that, right? Those shorts are, are hanging on for dear life. <laughs> But here we go. Into it, DSP's inbox. Oh, all right. That does that count as a flash? I mean, was that a flash? I guess it is. Our first flash of the paper, right there. It's like origami. <laughs> there we go. So here we go. Uh, just for the record, I got over five hundred emails. Uh, five hundred emails. The uh, address was open. By the way, if you sent me more than one email, like some people sent me like five to ten emails. Hotmail does tell me it's the same person, you know, and so obviously I'm not going to read all of your emails. Also, I can't promise that I'm going to read every email, but I did skim through That's them a B today. Rate. I did pick out some of the ones that I was... That's uh, a B-rate. <laughs> That's a B-ration right there. ...most interested or intrigued by, and uh, so here goes. Our first email is from Zombie246, and Big he up. says... Shout out Zombie246, wherever you are today. The following. Uh -huh. Hey, Phil, just wanted to tell you that Bioware said on their website a month ago... That there will be a Mass Effect movie coming out. What oh fuck! I want to also want to ask the uh, count the questions. So I'll, I'll add that for next time automatically. But I'll just do it manually style, manual style here. All right, we got our first question. So I'll just write it here. <laughs> so that's one question. I want to see how many questions we get to. You know. All right, first question in the book. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I think first of all, any time that a video well, it was a fucking question, I didn't even hear it. I was I, I zoned out because it was so boring. Email is from Zombie Two Forty Six. Yeah. What's the question? And he says the following. Hey, Phil, just wanted to tell you that Bioware said on their website a month ago that there will be a Mass Effect movie coming out. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, I think, first of all, any oh, Mass Effect movie. Some of these questions are so fucking dumb. I'm, I'm going to wish we'd ever started this. That a video game is good enough to be recognized to be worthy of having a movie made of it. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, however, unfortunately, as we've seen with the track record for video game movies, they've been pretty shitty. Um, okay. And so with a game take. like Mass Effect... Where even Mass Effect 1, the campaign was something like 30 hours long if you went ahead and did all the dialogue options and things like that. You got to kind of wonder how they're going to mm -hmm. cram something like that into a two-hour movie. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that they could probably take a lot of the elements out of a game like Mass Effect and make a pretty cruel kick-ass, you know, maybe two krill? or three hours. Side make a pretty krill? Out of a game like Mass Effect and make a pretty cruel kick-ass, you know, maybe... <laughs> it was cool and... and I don't know if it was a mix of killer and cruel, but it was something. It's a krill. Shout outs to krill. Watch this. Take a lot of the elements out of a game like Mass Effect and make a pretty cruel kick ass, you know, maybe two to three hour <laughs> sci fi movie. Krill. All right, Morden. I see you're asking this question. I actually didn't even eat dinner yet, brother. I didn't. Today's busy. Saturday's the busiest day, brother. I just don't see how they could take the real story from Mass uh -huh. Effect and try to cram it into such cram a short it in, period dude. of time. So I'm stoked that they're doing it uh, to answer the question. However, I guess we're going to have to see as more details develop, you know, what the movie really looks like, if they're going along with the game plot or a totally new plot. But it's pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. Our pretty next, krill. Uh, pretty pretty krill, for Botox, sure. And uh, <laughs> it reads as follows. Second so question. One of my friends really wanted to go to the SBO qualifiers at Game Galaxy Arcade to enter the Super Street Fighter uh, 2 Turbo Tournament. Uh -huh. I was reading the info, and the game will be played on the USA version. What is this? Po <laughs> Look at the pose. The, the paper's like dangerously down next to the, <laughs> the pen A. <laughs> of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Arcade Cabinet. Me and my friends mainly play... Those shorts are dangerously high right now. I mean, you have to fear some sneaking out. Remix. This is uh, a pretty good... So, I mean, that's some dangerous, man. Uh, Italian pubes might be sneaking out soon. Good question. Up until last week, it was fine. <laughs> okay. But then at a Super Street Fighter 4 tournament here in California, Super one of my Street friends Fighter. told me that the games are completely different in speed and character changes. I knew it wasn't a straight port, but is it really a completely different game? Uh-oh. Excellent question. Um, 
excellent question. So remember on the forums when I told other people that I thought it was different, but then they factually proved I wasn't I was wrong about that? Well now I can tell you whatever the fuck I want because it's ask the king, dude. Enjoy. Um, and coming from being that I am a, uh, a pro super turbo player, that is the game that I I'm a pro super turbo player. He never I mean that that's like a I'm a I'm a, a porn star, you know, you could just say that and you are that, you know? Like what does pro mean these days even? Like for me it's you make enough money, that's your income. And he was so far from that, but I guess he was he was pro. I'm a pro I'm a pro driver. I'm known I drive. I drive sometimes. Playing, you ask the right person. Oh, I'm known for playing. You ask the right person. A pro super turbo player. That is the game that I'm known for playing. You ask the right person. <laughs> you ask the right person. Okay. There's some people you could ask that suck. Like maybe like some people you might have heard of Justin Wong or something. Whatever. I'm a pro. Okay. Bottom line is absolutely yes, 100. percent There are speed changes and there are gameplay changes uh -oh. to. Super Street Fighter 2 HD Remix, which is available right now on Xbox 360 and PSN um, as a downloadable title. Uh, basically, what happened was Man. one of uh, the former pro players, David Serlin, actually worked for this company that developed HD Remix. And mm -hmm. What he was really looking to mm -hmm. do was to perfect Super Turbo and, and basically re-release it for the masses with new art, remixed music, and also tweaked gameplay. Um, but what ended up happening was it kind of split the Street Fighter community. There's pretty much... Half of us who really are dedicated to Super Turbo, the original version on arcade, we just love that version and we wish there could be an arcade perfect port. And uh -huh. on the other side of the fence, there's a bunch of people who have adopted HD Remix and said, this is a pretty good game, we're going to play it, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's in a lot of tournaments now. It was an evolution this year. It's uh -oh. been at previous tournaments uh, uh, all throughout the country. Uh, pers oh, look, at, we've got a nice leg dig here. <laughs> this year, it's been at previous tournaments. Uh, uh, all throughout the country. Digging deep. Uh, personally. Digging deep in the pork chops right there. <laughs> my personal opinion of it is that it's okay. I think that Super Turbo is Super Turbo. It's a, a really well-balanced <laughs> game. Not to say that there aren't tears, but as I said in previous videos, <laughs> if you really play your heart out. He was digging those pork chops. Those gams, yeah. That's the word I was looking for, the gams. <laughs> gams is a great word. Look at those gams. When you practice, <laughs> you can win with any character in Super Turbo. HD Remix was Serlin... Oh, yeah, so the, what room is this? A good question. This is actually his... Um, this is the... This is the parents... This is not... This is the CT condo already, right? Yeah, the CT condo. CT condo in the house. Uh, That's the back corner of that before it was totally messy. David Serlin tried to do is try to balance a lot of the things... The back... The... the like, this is where the boxes would pile up in time. ...that he felt were imperfect with the game... However, a lot of they're already piled up, by the way, but it would happen even worse. Really odd. Some that people never asked for, like actually making characters like Blanca take even more damage, which makes no sense because he's one of the lowest uh, tier characters in the mm -hmm. game. Just some really bizarre choices in design and things that he did with his changes that really make some people get upset about the game. Personally, I'll play it. I mean, if you want to <laughs> play HD Remix, I'll play it. But however, <laughs> it's I'm, I'm mesmerized watching the papers journey like we're all on the paper's journey back and forth as he screams about shit i'm i'm zoning out on the super battle opera was coming up and i knew the qualifier was coming up i purposely not played hd remix this <laughs> entire i purposely not played okay i purposely not played and i knew the qualifier was coming up i purposely not played hd remix okay. this entire year so far just I just just you could just make up the words whatever you want when you're drunk <laughs> didn't want to play that game and have maybe some small subtle changes throw off my my uh game for the super battle Opera qualifier so that's why you haven't seen me going around playing HD Remix yet. You know, I've really been, I've abstained from it. I told myself I refuse to play it. I don't want to throw my game off for regular Super Turbo. So your question is very valid, uh, baby. Itch, no itch, itch. If you guys only play HD Remix, then God, you itch. to try to enter the Super Battle Opera Qualifier. He's already all over the place tweaking with these itches. You might have found some changes in there that might have thrown off your game. And they're not going to be massive changes, but they might be enough that you would lose a match uh -huh. if something happens. You might lose you a match, understand. dude. Who cares? Um, so... It is what it is. I mean, HD Remix, okay. at least there is still a version of Super Turbo that's being played in tournaments competitively. Leave it at that. <laughs> uh, our next question comes... <laughs> what? what is this pinky action right here? What's going on with this pinky? <laughs> what? Look at this pinky work. 
Let me see what we have Triple here. Being played in tournaments, Look at this pinky. Leave it at that. Uh, our next question comes from Ishikabi. <laughs> And he says, hey, man, I was wondering if you had the time to tell me what tournaments and dates do you remember winning or placing near the top? I tried to Google your Oh, good question. But I couldn't find a list. Um, <laughs> I tried to Google it, but I couldn't find anything. What do you got to say? What do you got to say about that? Great question. I would say stay away from Google simply because historically Street Fighter tournament. <laughs> stay away from Google. Stay away from Google. You might learn something. Stay away from Google. Don't, don't end up on Google. Uh, but if you check out YouTube and you search for DSP Dark Side Phil, uh, you know, Super Turbo, you might find some older footage from like Evolution uh, East 2006 and 2007. I actually won Evo East 2006. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course you bring those up. 2006 and 2007. And first they had Anniversary Edition and then they had a PS2 version of Super Turbo that was on uh, Capcom Classics Collection 2. I won both of those events. Uh, my highest placing ever uh -oh. at a national level was actually at Evolution 2005. I placed fourth. Hold on. What did you get for that? I mean, that's pretty high placing. What did you get for that? Fourth place doesn't get anything. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Place in the Super Turbo tournament that year. That year, it was actually the Super Turbo version that was on the PlayStation 1. Um, I was actually the highest ranking U.S. player yeah. that year. All Remember he said that was a joke? Remember him saying that was a joke? Tell me if this sounds like a joke. Please. Please tell me when this is a joke. One, um, I was actually the highest ranking U.S. player that uh -huh. year. All top three spots for Super Turbo that year were Japanese players who would come over to participate in EVO. So, so I, thank you for re-upping your membership. So I is that dis diminished their finish in any way? <laughs> Big ups, Nick. The... the the cat coin king. That year I was considered the national champion. Of course, there was all kinds of controversy around that because people were saying, Oh my god, he got it! Nick, BMX guy, pulled up the cut new card. Nice. That's an epic pull there. Oh, who is DSP? You think that he's good? He played on a PS... Yeah, by the way, when I say fourth, does play, fourth place doesn't get anything, I see you putting that out. He did get something, but it's a few hundred dollars, so... He does get something for fourth place. He actually did get something for fourth place. It was a few hundred dollars, I believe. 400, I can't remember the exact number, but he got something. Yes, one version of the game that has slight differences. It's the same argument between Arcade Super Turbo and HD Remix that I just talked about. There's uh -huh. going to be differences in every port of the game, and a lot of the older players, the older school players, didn't appreciate the fact that I played so high. They thought that it might have been a fluke because uh, it was just a constant thought, uh, version of the game. Uh -huh. However, I think I pretty much proved myself when in 2006 and 2007, not only did I take Evo East both years, but in 2007, I actually went to every single Evo yeah, qualifier in I'm the listening. country, and I placed uh, top eight in every single one except for the Midwest Championships, which actually played on American controls on arcade <laughs> cabinet. I cannot play on American controls. I suck. I open the admit. I need to play on a Japanese-style joystick to be good at, at, at Street Fighter. So, so now... Like 40 likes <clears throat> It'd be great if we could get a bunch because we have almost 200 viewers. It'd be great if we could you get see more now likes. It helps the stream oh, and hurry the up, Phil. in general for discoverability purposes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're seeing now what why he did max out those credit cards because back then he knew that fourth place and the big players they thought it was bullshit, and that doesn't sit well with him. So he says, okay, 13 credit cards, I can use those to earn some respect, you know. And he did travel on those qualifiers. He did place high for that, but it was really all about defending that fourth place thing, you know? And he did with Evo East, but it wasn't Evo, right? It's not Evo, you know? It's just not. So winning Evo East is cool. Winning Evo, not winning Evo West, but getting top eight and all those other places is cool, but it's still, you know, it's not what he was after. He was after respect that no one was going to give him because, you know, he, he, no one has respect for him. He lost any chance for that the only way people were going to respect him is if he got first place in something in a big one and he didn't do that you know pretty much i showed everyone up that year and no one's really challenged me since then but the bottom uh, oh, 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 hold on sir what'd you say so pretty much i showed everyone up that year and no one's really challenged me since then but the bottom line is uh, i haven't been to tournaments since 2007 anyway really so there were, you know there's really no, no one really getting in my face about it um I, so okay Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. No one's really challenged him out. No, because you ran away. Guys, my sister's not being abused. He ran away. <laughs> Big ups, Black Mage 666. He looks like a hairy baby in a Ghostbusters onesie. <laughs> oh, God. You, when you stop playing, entering tournaments, you can't say, like, no one's challenging me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't say that anymore when you just stop playing.
So if you want to stop playing, cool. But you also can't say people aren't challenging me anymore. That's not how it works. You know, it's just not. You can't say that. (laughs) No no one really getting in my face about it. Um, Our next question Uh comes from the Dark Knight, Matty T. And he asks, hey, Phil, during your 2010 mid-year game schedule review, you said you're going to record Soul, um, Soul, I almost said Soul Calibur 2, StarCraft 2, and I was wondering how you were going to do that. Oh, God. Good question, simple answer. As you've seen in some of my videos, I now have <laughs> well, a really That's laptop. close to berating, but it doesn't count. Well, <laughs> a really long HDMI cable that goes to my receiver, which then goes to my HDTV. So basically, I'm able to play HD, you know, uh, uh, PC games on my system, and I'm just going to record just like I always do. Uh, I just actually tested it tonight. Yeah. Played 10 levels of Portal. It looks great. So I am really psyched. I'm pumped for playing StarCraft 2, and hopefully there will be games worthy on the PC of being played later in the future, you know, PC-exclusive games, and I'll, I'll try some of those as well. Well, that didn't end well. You, you stopped getting excited about that. Didn't take many years. Um, a couple more questions. I'll try to get through them quickly. The next question <laughs> is basically from uh, J.B. Hig. Higson, his question is, <laughs> do your donations from fans ever co- cover the cost of all the games and the equipment that you use? Okay. Um, and the answer is no. Um, uh, of course not. Oh, God, of course not. You think it comes close to that? Get the fuck out of here. What's wrong with you? These crazy questions. You think it comes close to that? Get out of here. Um, I do get donations, but a lot of people are really over-exaggerate what they think I'm getting. I've never bragged or said that I'm making so much money because honestly I'm not and even if I did I wouldn't Ooh. be like that but uh, I don't make a lot of money doing this I'm- yeah yeah here's the thing you don't brag when you have to pretend you're poor that's the that's the that's the secret sauce you found is pretend to be poor when you're not and that gets the tip sound good I mean, it's cool that people do send me donations and I appreciate it please you know again if you ever do feel like donating you can <laughs> just do uh, darksidephil at hotmail.com through paypal that's how uh-huh. I accept my donations um However, it, it, it really doesn't cover the cost. When you take a look at just the games <laughs> I've played this year, the equipment, the new camera that I'm using right now, the <laughs> other... Dude, you don't have to get closer to the camera. <laughs> you got closer to the camera. Just the games I've played this year, the equipment, the new camera that I'm using right now... <laughs> Did you have to lean for that? The other cam- camera that I bought, the Canon, um, I go through constantly new equipment... New things, the money to travel to places, for example, the money to travel now to Tennessee to enter the Super Battle Opera qualifiers, and if I win to go to Japan, that kind of stuff is all on my out of my pocket. Nothing's paying for that. Um, but don't get me wrong, the donations help. I appreciate them. They definitely do help if there's a tight time and then someone wants me to play a new game and I get a donation. It's awesome. It always helps me out. Uh-huh. And you guys really did help me out a couple of weeks back when my uh, Xbox Live account got hacked. Uh-oh. They sending me those uh, donations. You basically put the money right back in my account, and I didn't have to worry about uh, basically having any bills being overdrawn or anything like that because that asshole stolen money out of my bank account. So thank you very much. Always appreciate the donations, and uh, you know, by by all means, if you can afford it and you really willingly want to do it, go right ahead. <laughs> but I would never, you know, try to solicit anything from anyone. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, let's hear that again. Willingly want to do it, go right ahead. But I would never, you know, try to solicit anything from anyone. Okay. I would never try to solicit anything from anyone. Sound good? <laughs> 2010? Soldiers15 at Hotmail.com says, Are you willing to get, are you, not are you willing, but are you getting the new Xbox 360 Slim? I've already addressed this in my E3. Uh, my absolutely not. I have no reason to buy a 360. Single gout Crystal Hogan. That's not what we're looking for, but it's a pretty fucking high card there. That's a nice card. Slim. For my E3 review, my answer is absolutely no, so it's not bank account theft he's talking about here. His Xbox Live account was hacked uh, back in the day. I'm not sure the repercussions of that, but yeah, it was his Xbox Live account was hacked. Absolutely not. I have no reason to buy a 360 Slim. First of all, anyone who uses wireless... Is this, is this berating, by the way? We're kind of on that path, so you got to judge for you got to judge here. Is he berating this, this question or not? Getting the new Xbox 360 Slim. I've already addressed this in my E3 review. Mm. My answer is absolutely not. I have no reason to buy a 360 Slim. First of all, anyone who uses wireless internet, just so you know, if you use it for games online, it's awful. It creates lag. It can make your connection uh, disconnect. It can cause lag in your inputs. Especially for fighting games, you would never want to use a wireless connection ever. Um, For other games, it's a little bit more forgiving, but if you really want the best experience, you have to have a direct connection. Uh So I don't care about the built-in wireless. I already have a hard drive that's more than big enough for what I use. So it creates lag and creates lag inputs. 
How many more excuses can we pack into that fucking Wi-Fi? I have no need for 250 gig, and there's nothing else about the system that's appealing to me. They say no red ring, well, big deal. I have an Elite right there that I've had for over two years with no red ring, so big deal, right? No, I'm not <laughs> buying a Slim. There's no reason to get one. And in my opinion, if you already own a 360, there's really no reason to get one. It was a really dumb marketing ploy by Microsoft, <laughs> and there's no reason for anyone to buy one. So I wonder how many Slims were, were sold. <laughs> How many millions did Xbox make from the Slim? I don't know, but <laughs> let's just check. <laughs> I'm sure it was a good idea. Whatever he says is a bad idea, that means it's good. But if you have one already, I, I agree it's a bad idea, but I still think they showed a fuck ton of those, didn't they? Three more questions. The next one is... Itch, itch, itch. It's the gams. About owning my we need soul. a gam oh, itch a counter, treat. maybe. The subject of the email is sell your soul. So I'm excited already because let me tell you, I've been waiting my whole life for Satan to come in and make me an offer that to sell him, sell him my soul. I don't give a shit. Give me fucking wealth and fame and a hundred beautiful babes who all are on my cock all day. I'm ready. So hopefully this is it. This is my chance. <laughs> sell your soul to Demon Souls on PS3. You should consider playing. I am the best. <laughs> Big ups, Breezy Style. Hey, little Wayne and my legs here certified 10 star hogan played it bangers and that's the bottom line absolutely misery merchant in the house for both of those and may the first be with you single star is a nice pull Playing it. nice pull oh. all right uh, okay oh that's brace braiding coming Hopefully this is it this is my chance very funny very funny sell your soul to demon souls on ps3 you should consider playing it Fuck you, Tech Subgen 29. Fuck you. Wasting my fucking guy. Anyway. Up next, Big ups, uh, Slash XSD says, This Good is not pool. an email, but I have an honest question. Do you uh -oh. go hard at all? Uh -oh. Do you have a girlfriend? How do you manage your time? Yada, yada, yada. And this is a common question. People ask me this all the time. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, because they... People actually... Oh, he said it's hilarious. But yeah, because people can't believe you would ever do that. So they want you to talk about it. This is a common question. People ask me this all the time. It's hilarious to me because people... Let's see if it's hilarious or not. People actually think that, like, if you like video games and it's your hobby, that, like, you couldn't possibly have a life outside of that. How could you have friends and a girlfriend? And how could you manage all your time if you play video games? I mean, it's a such a stupid friend. notion. Really, like, at the, the culture of the United States has just made people <laughs> who enjoy certain things feel like shit. I, I mean, I feel bad for people... All right. He earned it. People who maybe grow up liking video games and they get made fun of or whatever. It's ridiculous. I mean, uh -huh. it's part of our culture. Video games are now making more money than motion pictures. Think about that. The movie industry <laughs> who talks like that? They're not making more than motion pictures. You know, back in my day, we had the motion pictures. You see? And they're making more money than the motion pictures. <laughs> motion pictures. <laughs> Making more money than motion pictures. They can make as much money as a video game industry. <laughs> so it's serious business now. It's now time to, to get rid of these stupid preconceptions and, and notions that anyone who plays video games is a loser. Could you please answer the question, sir? I should have done it. Yeah, I think it's someone someone suggested a don't answer the question counter. This is that case, unless you get back to the fucking point. Who has no fucking life. So to answer your specific question, yes. do you go now, out at all? Absolutely, I go out. Absolutely, I do. I go out to the arcades. I go out to my job and I come home. Anything else? I just went out last Friday and I saw Inception and I did a review about it when I got yeah, home. I awesome. go all the time with my friends and we don't just always play games. We go and do other stuff. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things in the world to do besides video games. It just happens to be my main hobby and the thing that I enjoy doing the most. And I share it with everyone and everyone, um, excuse you know, makes out because of it. Sir, uh, he asked about a girlfriend, but you leave that part out, I guess. Do you have a girlfriend? Well, yeah, yeah, here we oh go. my god, I love when I get this question. Oh, how could he have possibly have a girlfriend? No girl would touch a gamer. Get the fuck out of here, man. I've had girlfriends. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You think people can resist this? Fuck out of here. What's wrong with you? How could he have possibly have a girlfriend? No girl would touch a gamer. Get the fuck out of here, man. I've had girlfriends <laughs> in the past. I have girlfriends, you know, in the present. Do I currently have What? Uh, what? I had girlfriends in the past. I had girlfriends in the present. Okay. I had girl. I have girlfriends in the future. I've had girlfriends in the past. Okay. I have girlfriends, you know, in the present. Do I currently have a steady girlfriend right now? No. Okay, so choice. no. There's not. It's not that there's no 
options out there for me or, or offers. I just don't really want to have a steady girlfriend right now. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. Great. I have I I used to have girlfriends. I'm girl. I have many girl. Oh, monkey spank in the house. Nice pool around time. So here's the here's what he said again. I've had girlfriends in the past. I have girlfriends in the present. I don't have a girlfriend now. Did I, did I say anything incorrectly? <laughs> I have girlfriends in the past. I have girlfriends now. I don't have a current girlfriend. Okay. I'm working on some stuff at work. I'm trying to get this YouTube thing to work. Um, and I really don't think I could even deal with a steady girlfriend right now. Um, could deal with them. They're such a hassle. You know, I can't deal with this shit. There's not girls who I like who I see every once in a while, if you know what I mean. That's just, you know. Uh, you know what he's saying there, right? mean that there's not girls who I like who I see every once in a while, if you know what I mean. That's just, you know, that's life. I mean, if you don't <laughs> believe it and you think that I'm making it up, yep. you're out of your fucking mind and oh. uh, you're basically just a jealous idiot. Uh, is this berating the question or not? It kind of sounds, seems like it. Jealous that you can't have a life where you can have fun playing video games, but also be normal and have... <laughs> what was that look down? It's very odd. Jealous that you can't have a life where you can have fun Love playing video guy. games, but also be normal and have women and have fun. You can Be normal and have women and have fun. Like, he, he pointed at his chest and then looked down to say, like, Wait, wait, what, who pointed at me? You can have fun playing video games, but all <laughs> Like dumb there! <laughs> what a dumb bitch. <laughs> Big ups, Black Mage. Says, knowing the semantics games he plays, he's counting Rambo as his boyfriend. Oh, probably. But he, he goes, he touches himself in the chest and is like, huh? Oh, maybe it's the tuck-in? A very odd move here. All right, so he t does the tuck, sneaky tuck, and then... I guess <laughs> this is funny. I think he, yeah, I th yeah. Maybe he thought the shirt might have pulled up. Yeah, you Weston. Yeah, I think you're on it. I think he thought he had a gamer shirt on, but was like, it's not game. I mean, whatever. Come on, dude. It's Ghostbusters. Like, I'm cool. I'm banging all these girls. I mean, there, there's sometimes girls that come over. You know what I'm talking about, right, guys? Video games, but also be normal and have women and have fun. Yeah. You can do everything. You just need to have a balance. And actually, <laughs> you need to have a balance. This is. Great question is this third part of his question. How do you manage your time? Very carefully. I make sure. <laughs> Very carefully. Wake up at 11. Sure. That when I <laughs> the membership. Big up, Teddy Shaped Soap. I love Teddy Shaped Soap. Good luck on your pool. I do things like the, my YouTube channels that doesn't overlap with other critical important things in my life. For mm -hmm. example, I work an 8 to 10 hour a day job. Shout and out to Sikorsky. I make sure that I'm not running the fuck out of there to go home to record a game. I make sure that I'm not staying up till 5 in the morning and then trying to go to work at 7. I ration my time so that I have enough time to do what I want. <laughs> and if you're a mature adult, anyone should be able to do that. Down for a punch has an idea. Everything else. Big ups, if man. If you're a rational adult, you can be able to plan and say, I have a budget and I can afford this and this and this. And you don't overspend. You don't... This is incredible. This is incredible. Talking from a person that you are watching has maxed out all his credit cards with cash advances right now, and he's literally paying them back as we are watching him tell you about a budget. He's telling you about a budget with all his credit cards maxed out. Rack up your. I mean, I don't know. How, they might have maxed out at this point. He's paying them back slowly still. Credit cards. And to be honest, when I started this whole thing on YouTube, you know, it was a little bit tough because I wanted to play every game, but I had to put my foot down and say, you know what, I can't play every game. I don't have the money to do it. I don't have the time to do it. Uh -huh. So I pick and choose the games that I like the best, and in my free No, no, yeah, you ask your audience to choose every fucking game you play. Time, I do playthroughs of them, and I have a hell of a lot of fun doing it, and I have a life outside of that, and that's that. That's the end of the question. I hope that was a sufficient answer for everyone who was either hating and trying to basically be like, ah, oh, there's no way you could possibly have a real life and do what you do. And I hope for, for people who are inspired and want to do something like this. <laughs> uh -huh, very much inspired. And enjoy watching my videos and are worried that maybe it would hinder their lives. There's a way to do it and to have a balance. That's all it is. The key to this, the answer to the question is a balance between everything. Uh -huh. So it is what it is. Okay. The final question for this first uh, session of DSP Inbox Hey, Phil, why did you decide to start doing game playthroughs, and what, who inspired you to do so? Well, and that's from mm. JediFan421, by the way. So thank you, everyone. First batch of questions were very it's good. It's like and interesting. Um, 
to answer that question, it's a funny story. Uh, okay, we're going to see. Happened, it's a funny story. Hang on to your hats. What happened was, I had, was playing the game Lost Odyssey on Xbox 360, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to buy the strategy guide, because I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to go buy a $25 fucking dollar strategy <laughs> guide to figure something out. But you always did. And in most cases, I would say games, if you're in a tough spot, you don't have to cheat. And to be honest, there's very few games that I ever look anything up for anymore. The exception... Right, right. The exception is when they ask me to know countries like, you know, Spain, the UK, that kind of stuff. That tough stuff, right? It would have been like Secret Among the Island 2. I had to because a game like that, there's no real hints or clues that tell you what to do. Once uh, you get stuck, you're fucking stuck because it's... Uh, you can get stuck in those games, but there definitely is usually hints or clues. Because a game like that, there's no real hints or clues that tell you what to do. Once mm-hmm. you get stuck, you're fucking stuck because of some of the silly stuff that happens in the game. The silly combinations of objects that actually solve the puzzles... You probably never figure it out unless you sat there clicking for 30 hours straight. And who wants to see me do a 30 hour playthrough for a game? He's talking about Moon Logic. Point and click gamers will know about Moon Logic. And that's only five hours long. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been efficient. Um, it wouldn't have been efficient. But I remember in particular when I was playing Lost Odyssey that there was this one part of the game that I was just stuck. I couldn't get by it. And it, I think it was that. Oh, yeah, we're still on the funny story, by the way. We're, we're not at the end of this funny story, so wait for the laugh. I didn't know what to do. I don't think it was a certain boss or anything like that. I just think I was stuck and I didn't know where to go, what I was looking for. The game wasn't being very clear. And so I went online and I noticed I couldn't find any videos of this game either. I was like, what's going on? Where, where? And <laughs> what? What the fuck, dude? One guy, I mean, only one guy had a playthrough <laughs> of this game on YouTube. And he didn't do any commentary or anything. It was just straight gameplay. And so I had to kind of skip through uh-huh. all those videos, trying to find this particular part. And finally, after searching for like an hour, I found the right part. I found what I was supposed to do. And I said, shit, man. You know. <laughs> shit, man. Strategy guides are for the past. The wave of the future is live playthroughs, live walkthroughs. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. And I wish that. A bit of revisionist history dumb here. <laughs> what a dumb bitch. <laughs> that, you know, there could be value added. Because in order to really be successful in life, Mm -hmm. you can't just do one thing. You have to do it and then have a value added to it. So when I play... What? Okay, to do one thing... Uh, Hold on, let's go back to that. To do one thing... Like commentary, jokes, things like... You can't just do one thing. You have to do do it and then have a value added to it. Okay, you have to do one thing and do a value added to it. Okay, big ups to to Black Mage saying, wait a minute, stop the cap. He said he never intended to make walkthroughs and wanted to entertain people. Phil lied. Yeah, he just wanted to entertain. He wanted to entertain. You so when I Little play Wayne. games on YouTube, I don't just want to play the games. I want to also give live commentary, jokes, things like that, my live reactions, because that adds a value to that product. It makes uh-huh. it unique. Oh, does that value? It's Let me tell you that. For everyone oh. who wants to see it, very marketable. Wants to see my videos because of that unique factor that I add to uh-huh. them. Um, and so I was realized at that point, you know, I was realized add to them. Um. And so I was realized at that point, you know, keep in mind, this was around, I think it was around early 2008, I want to say. Around early 2008, when Lost Odyssey was a new game. I don't remember exactly when it was released. But mm-hmm. um, at that point in the fall of 2007 was when I found out about my back injury. And for those Uh-oh. who don't know, I have a severely herniated disc in my lower back. Back um, injury never counter. Get better. It never does get better, that kind of injury. You can either deal with it and adjust your lifestyle to it, or you can get surgery that may or may not work. So it sounds like you have two options. <laughs> did he say I have no options and then list two options? Hold on a second here. What did he start that with again? I found out about my back injury. Uh-huh. For those that don't know, I have a severely herniated disc in my lower back. Okay. Um, it's never going to get better. It never does get better. That- it's never going to get better. It never does get better. Okay. That kind of injury. You can either deal with it and adjust your lifestyle to it. So adjust your lifestyle to it, or or you can get surgery. Or you that get surgery. May or may not work. Is may or may not work. Very expensive, and would mean that I would have to take a lot of time off of work to recover. So uh, the time being, I opted mm-hmm. to try to live with the injury, and I have been for about three years now. And I have to say, I had to make some changes in my life, some things that uh-huh. are kind of upsetting to me. But at the same time, <laughs> I've been upsetting. With it. Um, and actually, it's one of the main reasons why I started playing games so much is because. I realized I couldn't go out and play a game of football anymore, and I couldn't go, you know, do a <laughs> strenuous physical activity. I could play a game of football. I could still stay home and enjoy <laughs> video games, which was one of my hobbies. So, after the whole Lost Odyssey fiasco, um, I believe it was the fall of uh, 2008, <laughs> and I was bored, 
and I've been playing a lot of games, more games than usual, uh, since, like I said, my back injury had was I thought, bugging me. I thought you had and a lot of girlfriends. I playing this game, um, I think it was Dead, was it either Dead Space, Saints Row 2. Can we get to the point? Or, I can't even remember, Mercenaries? I think Dead Space was one of my first videos. I swear it was one of my first mm -hmm. videos. I remember playing this game saying, damn, uh -huh. this game is, is scary as hell. But a lot of my friends really aren't talking about it. I wish there was a way for me to get the word out about this game. <laughs> yeah, you need friends for those? That's the tough part. None of my friends are talking about this game. <laughs> get the hint. <laughs> They're not talking to you at all. So if you look on YouTube, one of my earliest videos is called Dead Space Chapter 2, Scary as Hell. Oh. And the purpose of that video wasn't to be a walkthrough or a playthrough. I just wanted to show gameplay of Dead Space and show everyone how good it was, how, how scary I thought it was. And after I kept playing, after I started seeing comments, people were like, Wow, Phil, this is a good video. Keep going. We like your commentary with it. And so I actually played through a lot of the game. And after that, I said, you know what? People seem to like when I'm giving my live commentary and my live reactions <laughs> to the game. So why not do more? And so I started doing So any positive, re any positive reinforcement, that sent him off. You know, that is why he's still going today. That positive reinforcement that he never got anywhere else. YouTube gave it to him. You know, because there was people in chat saying you're funny, you know, and that was it. That is that he just like hooked himself up to the drug dealer known as acceptance. And it, it took hold, you know, it took hold. Doing other games and the rest is pretty much history. Uh, I think really I started to become popular on YouTube when I did Spider-Man Web of Shadows later uh -oh. that year. Uh-oh. It was October of that year. That goddamn Spider-Man game. For whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, that's this it. This is crazy. That game is still one of, if not the most viewed game that I've ever done. And I think it was because no one could find a better quality playthrough of that game on YouTube with commentary. Like, there were, I guess there were videos of it, but nothing interesting. Itch, itch, itch. People liked it when I was playing, giving my reactions. Oh, this is hard. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> That's a great example of your commentary, Philip. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> That's value added. Fuck out of here. People liked it when I was playing, giving my reactions. Oh, this is hard. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> That's value added. It's just something that they had never really seen before. Never and, saw uh, that, dude. It's awesome. After I saw how popular some of those videos became, I think one of them almost has 500,000 views, I said, shit, I can really maybe do something with this. And at that time, I had the shitty camera. wasn't even widescreen. I had to go from the side angle at the TV. Uh -huh. you know, it looked really bad. But after a while, after I kept doing it, and especially after Street Fighter 4 came out, being that I was a, 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 a pro player in Street Fighter, and I knew a lot more than anyone else who was playing the game and making videos, uh -huh. people really started to value my, my, my commentary and my insights into these games. A few comments, and this now people are valuing his commentary and insights. And the rest is history. You know, I upgraded my camera, started playing a lot more games, uh, opened up the, the donations line, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. Got to get that open, am I right? Got a partner channel, The King of Hate HD, where I don't put any game-related footage or anything like this. You see videos like this instead. Oh, yeah, there you go. So The King of Hate HD is partnered, but ne those days, you cannot have gameplay. That was fucking copyright. YouTube was not down with that. So on his King of Fate HD, that's why he did his vlogs and stuff, because he could make money from those. That was it, though. So at this time, this is a crazy time now. Not making any money. Those 500,000 views he just talked about, that's zero. Got zero money from those. And, uh, you know, I get some ad revenue off of that, which is very nice uh, to have a little bit of extra money in pocket for expenses for things like this. And uh, for the most part, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to keep doing it until, you know, there's a reason for me not to do it. And right now, there really is none. So, All right, 2010, he said that. I enjoy doing it. I hope you guys enjoy it. That's really how it started. There's no big, you know, amazing story behind it. It just kind of happened due <laughs> to circumstances in my life. Talks for 20 minutes is up. Not, 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 not big, big story to it, though. Not make big story. You know, that story you just heard, that's not that great, but I still told it. The things that were going on, so. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. Boat night in the house. His furniture looks like he took them from a motel. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a strapping young lad. That's it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this first part Foil of the Jaha. DSP Inbox. Uh, feel free to send me more emails. Again, it's dspinbox at hotmail.com. Remember that uh, this week, it's later on this week, I will be at Super Battle Opera Qualifiers in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. So if you have questions about that, feel free to send Shut me at fuck any up, questions. Um, I will be yep. taking video there as well. As okay. long as the internet's itch, fine, itch, I'm going to try itch. to upload it you know, while I'm there. If not, I'll have to wait till I get home. But okay. uh -huh. um, that's it. So... 
thanks for uh, for caring. Thanks for sending me questions, and uh, I'll see you next time on DSP's inbox. <laughs> I love the get ups. All right, next one. We're going forward. Oh yeah, someone did the party on Dave. Got the rare. This is the ultra rare. <laughs> it's better with music. I wish there was music on. <laughs> This is the super rare one in a hundred shot, but it's better if there's fucking music. That's okay. Who did that? Intelligent counterspell. Got the got the party on Dave going. Anyways, okay. Enough nonsense. Enough nonsense. We are now going to DSP's inbox part two. So this is the second one. This took place only twenty days later. Okay, twenty days later. Camera angle appears to be the same. We do have jeans on. All right, we do have jeans. Rocking the jeans. Got some sparkly, oh, some water on the left of us. Let's fucking go, man. Look at the DVDs. I see the Sandlot. What else can I recognize? I don't know. I can't recognize much. But there we go. Try to, try to see what you see there as we go to the second episode of the pre-Ask the King DSP's Inbox. Hey everyone, it's DSP uh, with episode two of uh, DSP's <laughs> Inbox. Dude, do this before the you push record, man. What? Like, if you know, you don't have to do the tuck out and the sit up. Like, what? Do that after, then push record. What is this? You're like not even ready at attention yet. So it's like, oh shit. Tuck out the shirt, then sit up, then then start the questions. SP, uh, with episode two of uh, pull, DSP's pull, inbox. lean forward. Um, before we even start, what is this angle? Quick things, first of all, I just this is not the right angle, brother. Um, before we even st <laughs> what? start, this is not the right angle, brother. Whew, a couple quick things, first. Oh, he's gonna explain the gut. First of all, I just got. Overeat he I didn't even read the text. I didn't even read the text. He texted that in. He wrote that in as a cope. Overeating plus dairy when you're part lactose intolerant equals bloated bumming DSP. Alright, so this let, let's get let's get to the truth of the matter. He recorded this whole thing, said, Holy shit, man, I'm not looking good. And then he went back and wrote this. I mean, let's get it real. <laughs> I didn't even see him. I didn't even read it. Overeating plus dairy when you're part lactose intolerant. <laughs> God. Bloated bumming DSP. Yeah. Best I, I need to write something here. This looks pretty rough. Uh, Overeating plus dairy. <laughs> so he over... He, we don't know if those are connected, by the way. So he could have overeaten... And then had dairy, but they don't have to be specifically connected. And then he also is bloated. Now he's bloated because of that, but also bumming. Okay, so I think bumming it means like you're kind of not dressed well. But I, I don't know what overeating or dairy has to do with what clothes you wear. I don't know. But we'll, we'll maybe we'll figure that out together. Let's go. <laughs> Back from dinner with my parents and oh, dinner with mommy and daddy must be great because they picked up the bill. <laughs> Fucking assholes. I can always make them pay the bill. <laughs> a pro tip for anyone who's partially <laughs> All right. lactose. Thank you for re upping your membership. I appreciate it. Toxic cherry juice. Good luck on the pool, legend, right there. What's up, everyone? Oh, God, it's not again. DSP. Before uh -huh. we even start, whew, a couple quick whew. things. First of all, I just got back from dinner with my parents and. A pro tip for anyone who's partially lactose intolerant like me. <laughs> Wear the tightest jeans possible. Do not order the crab bisque, no matter how good it sounds, because you will be in pain afterwards. Um, so if I... Dude, come on, man. If you... That's the lactose intolerance thing. Is, lactose intolerance thing is such a meme. Like, you know it. You know, like, you know if you are or not and what you should be able to eat, I guess. Like, you just ignore that. I have to run off to explode into my bathroom at any time right. this Thank video. you for re-upping your me. membership. I appreciate um, that. One other thing that I do want to say is... Just, I'm just going thank past. Thank you to the viewer. Uh, you, you might find this hard to believe, but a viewer actually donated a Nintendo Wii, uh, which I received this week, and therefore, because I've gotten this Wii for free, 
Uh, it's basically locked in that yes, I will be playing Metroid Other M uh, come late August when that game comes. Thumbs down, it motherfucker. That's that playthrough. Comes out, so thank you very much. One problem. I accidentally deleted your email, dude. Um, uh, your messages that you sent me on YouTube, uh, basically telling me that you were the one who sent me this Wii. I know who you are because I have all your information, obviously, from the shipment. But I, <laughs> yeah, I got all your information on the shipping la label, but... Uh... Your email address to send you... Remember I said I was going to uh, pay for the shipping because I was so appreciative that you were going to donate that that I said I would pick up the shipping. I have to get that out there, don't you? This doesn't have to be said at all, but remember I said that I definitely felt so appreciative that I wanted to pay the shipping? Remember I said that to you? Yeah, 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 I was gonna do that. So send me uh, another message on YouTube and I'll take care of that for you, no problem. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, we got a lot of questions to cover, we got a lot of new questions in the past like two weeks, gone. especially with uh, SBO <laughs> qualifiers and things that went on, so let's get right to it. The first question we all right, have, all right, this is an odyssey right here. This this is uh this is something else. All right, this right hand is about to get go through the fucking weeds right here, all right? <laughs> Big ups down four punch. 27.98 lactose intolerant style, okay? Very lactose intolerant. I I eat lobster bisque. All right, we're ready. Watch the work this right hand goes through right here. This is a, a whole procedure. This is like a surgical procedure. I think the issue is the shirt is a bit tucked in. But watch this. Here we go. Come on. Especially with uh, SPO oh. qualifiers and oh. things that went oh. on. So let's oh. get right to it. So the first question <laughs> oh. we have. That was a multi-step process and it goes to the chin rub. <laughs> well, let me see here. <laughs> here. Um, this one comes from Scott Henderson. And the question is, what do you got, I'd Scott? like to ask you, how long will you keep posting video game walkthroughs, reviews, and video games in general? I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't keep playing and posting videos on YouTube on video games forever, okay? Um, mm, I mean, you can't be be right or not, you can judge it. Every day on YouTube when you're 40 to 50 years old, and maybe trying to uh, video games and posting video games every day on YouTube when you're 40 to 50 years old. Notice the laugh. 70 likes if you're having a good time tonight. Notice the laugh. Like we hit 100 likes we'll do a celebratory bubble blow. That would be swell if you could do that. Notice the laugh. That's interesting right there, you know? <laughs> Kevin in the house says he's the love child of Lou Costello and Porky Pig. <laughs> but notice the laugh. He says 40, 40, 40 45 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a thought, right? <laughs> Idiot. Um, I mean, you can't be playing on video games forever, okay? Okay. Um, I mean, you can't be playing video games and posting video games every day on YouTube when you're 40 to 50 years old, maybe trying to start a family. Well, if I'm 40 to 50 years old and I'm just trying to start a family, I'm a little late. Um, oh, <laughs> God. Second Latina. Nice, nice pull. Well, if I'm 40 to 50 years old and I'm just trying to start a family, I'm a little late. Um... If I'm 40, 50 years old, I'm just trying to start a family. I'm a little late. All right. Well, he's not wrong there. He goes on to say, and I know that it's a long, that's a still a long time from now. I'm sure you'll, you, you'll always continue with your love of video games. And you'll sure, keep sure, videos sure. on video games for many years to come. But when do you think that, you know, your life will become so busy uh, that you'll be too bored or you'll want to travel, get married, and you won't want to post videos? Well, no, no, don't worry about those things. I don't care about chicks that much. <laughs> First of all, just to let you know, Scott, it's not even a concern right now because I've only been doing videos on YouTube, if you can believe it, for less than two years. Don't worry, I don't care about chicks that much, dude. Um, <laughs> not a big deal for me. <laughs> uh, my video history, and you'll see that my first real serious group of videos was in 2008, the fall of 2008, when I started uh, doing this. Uh, <laughs> Do I, is this berating, by the way? It's like very close, but it's not quite there. More prolifically uh, and more steadily. Before then... Every once in a while, I would do a video, but it wasn't anything, you know, major. Um, <laughs> Shout outs to the socks. Right now, I'm enjoying what I'm doing on YouTube. I'm, I'm getting, you know, lots of views, lots of. Uh, Can you answer the question? How many times do you say this random shit? Uh, positive feedback, popularity. I get donations. Like I just mentioned, someone donated a Wii, and I actually make ad revenue off of my. Hey, okay, that is. Can we can't can we get to the answering the question, sir? My channel, the King of Hate HD, and to be completely honest, it's helping me out a lot. Um, it's allowing me to do things. Excuse like me, go sir. To Tennessee and enter the SPO <laughs> qualifier. I asked about what was the question again? I asked about if you thought yourself doing this in the future. Uh, do you want to talk about that or just saying stuff? And do other things um, that normally maybe I wouldn't have the money to do. So, 
Right now, it's pretty cool. It's actually kind of a supplemental income for me, but at the same time, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Because I'm not officially working for anyone, I'm able to say whatever the hell I want to say and give you honest reactions <laughs> to the games I play and give you honest... Man, this playbook has not changed at all, man. It's amazing how the ideas are still here. You know, I could say whatever the fuck I want, give you their honest opinions. Jasper the cat in the house says, dude, I have a cat, a family, a cat, a cat, flies, and ants, and also wooden critters, or the extended family. Big ups, dude. And, you know, probably one of the few people on the internet that's allowed to do that because I didn't actually sign up any contract, even though I've had a couple offers now to do it, to work Ooh. for, you know, these mainstream companies, I've turned them down because I'd rather be independent and be honest with you, the, the, the viewer. So... That's crazy, though. He had that thought from since 2010. Sure, of course, you know, I'm sure there's going to come a point in my time, in my life, when either my job, my real job outside of what I do on YouTube is going to become very demanding or, uh, you know, something will happen and I'll run into a person who I want to spend the rest of my life with and I'd rather spend time with that person than make videos for YouTube. Mm, that wouldn't happen. Just just a little spoiler. That that wouldn't happen, brother. But still, people seem, don't seem to understand it. That doesn't mean that just because you have a life, you can't also have a hobby. Uh -huh. well, no. well, it does for... That's the thing, though. You're kind of talking yourself out of it. For, you can do that, but you didn't do that. You made this hobby that became your job every single minute of every single day. Maybe I'll still be able to balance what I do. Maybe I'll have to cut down on what I do on YouTube. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to have to stop altogether. So to answer your question, Scott, I can't answer that question. <laughs> who knows what the future will bring? This is still <laughs> to answer the question, I can't answer that question. But I just talk about random shit I want to talk about. It's pretty much a new thing for me. Um, you know, like I said, only doing it only about a year and a half to two years now. Um, right now it's actually helping me income wise, which is great. Um, and <laughs> you already said that part. Videos and play more games for you guys and, and girls and uh, women and men, whatever, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to try to be more inclusive. He says girls and guys, women and men. <laughs> Very inclusive. I love that. <laughs> for you guys and, and girls and uh, women and men. <laughs> the next choice is dog so he gives very inclusive females males and dogs <laughs> he was trying to like be more politically correct i thought but he goes girls and, and women and, and men and, and dogs so get fucked cats you guys and, and girls and uh, women and men whatever dogs, <laughs> whatever. Watch dogs. videos um <laughs> Well, I don't know. Will there ever come a time when I'll stop? Maybe, but we'll see in the future. It's kind of, a, I don't know, it's kind of a weird question because... Oh, that's a break. Uh, I don't I'm know. giving it. Who knows? In two years, YouTube could be defunct. I mean, it could be crazy. Something that's a break. So who knows? Um, next question. Oh, the, the, the official drinking game of this night, by the way, if you're drinking, please drink responsibly, is the berate counter. I think that's the thing. If you get a berate, that's when you do the, the drink right there because berates are kind of the right... Density, I think. It's from Dark Wolf 1191, and he says, "I've seen your footage from tournaments you've been to. I was wondering, is there some sort of website or place to find out about these events that you use? Also, is there any other thing that you can talk about, like, for example, what countries are eligible to enter these? Because I'm from the UK. How old <laughs> would you have to be to enter, etc., etc., etc.? Well, if you don't know, really, the major look at this monkey itch." This is like the, the, you know, the chimpanzee head itch. It's like that. That's it. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly it. The little, little kind of. This is the <laughs> what's a good name? Bisky Kong. <laughs> this is lobster Bisky Kong. Oh, really? The major hub for Street Fighter tournaments, which is what I attend, mm -hmm. is www.showryukin.com. That's spelled S H. -O oh yeah, we've we heard a lot about that site. K E N. dot com. It'll bring you to their main page. If you click on the forums uh, section of their page, and you go to the tournaments and events section, uh -huh. it lists all of the tournaments that are going on. They're publicly. That's a good way to say it. And to answer your question, the ninety-nine point nine percent of them, anyone can enter. Any age, it doesn't really matter. Usually these events have some kind of a cover charge or an entry fee that you have to pay. Uh -huh. uh, some are console, some are arcade, depending on where you are. Most of them these days are console. Some are on PlayStation 3, some are on Xbox 360. Usually they, they list really ask about this. They did not There's ask no about this. There's no limitation to who can enter. 
However, most tournaments, in fact, I'd say the majority of them are in-person tournaments. Meaning Ooh. you're not going to find an online tournament where someone from the UK can fight against someone from Japan who can then fight someone against the US. Simply because, as we've discussed many times, the net code for Street Fighter games isn't good enough yet to do that. Uh -huh. uh, so most oh, of these tournaments hopefully the Cannon Brothers get to work on that. Big Up's Down 4 Punch with a nice Seattle staycation. That's free tonight, by the way. Mubi Kong. That's gay. What else do you want? Movie Kong works. Tournaments are offline, in-person tournaments. Um, for example, Evolution had an entrance, I think, from something like seven or eight different countries this year. Um, with over 1,500 entrants. I think they said it was actually you pop a pump. Right. entrants from all over the world. It, these tournaments are open usually to everyone. It's just that most of the tournaments that you see are little local events. They're not giant events. You have to kind of look monkey itch, the monkey events itch. that are kind of uh, created as a sticky uh, topic on the forum, I mean, <laughs> they stick to the top of the forum. Usually, those are the more <laughs> they stick to the they stick to the top of the forum, dude. They're like glue. Popular sticky posts. Uh, bigger events that need uh -huh. more attention and will draw more people. But to answer your question, there's no way. <laughs> to answer your question, can we get there? Limit. There's no real, you know, limit of where you where you have to be from. Just show up in time. Most of the rules and the times and the places are listed and the forums there. And you have to pay an entry fee, and then you're you're free to enter enter and play. So uh -huh. okay. it pretty much is an open thing right now. It's not any kind of an elitist group of only certain people who can enter these tournaments. <laughs> Why would you think that? It's an elitist. So just go to the place, but the, there's not there's not elitist groups. Okay. Okay. Up next, we got a question from Steve DeCasa, and this is Steve a long one, so Bear with me. It says, hey, Phil, nice burp. I'm a longtime fan. First uh -huh. time getting in touch with you. I watched all your videos from the SBO qualifiers, and they're very entertaining. I'm not even a Street Fighter player, but I find them fun to watch. I thought maybe a good idea for a video, maybe you could re-upload some of the important matches from that tournament, like the grand finals of you versus Dom Die, and put an audio commentary over it. Like yeah, great game, idea. Explaining what's going on. In the great fucking idea, dude. In the match, what's going on? I mean, this is legitimately a great idea. Let's hear the, the people would have killed for this back in the day because people are just uploading like shitty cameras holding, watching arcade. You can't even fucking see what's going on. Those would get 50,000 views on YouTube at this time. People are so hungry for it. I can't wait to hear how Phil shoots this down. On your head, what you're thinking, strategies, etc. And he goes on to say he sees this happen in some poker shows and maybe it would be a good catch for a video series for me. That's actually a really good idea. And Oh, uh, at one point, I might end up doing that. Uh, it's not actually anything really that I've been planning to do, but if there is a demand of people who really want to know what gets, what's going on in the heads of players when they're playing these matches, that's something that I could definitely do, especially yeah. if I have the raw footage. It would be pretty easy to just you know record an audio commentary over it and dub be it. be very easy, brother. Release it. But what I would want to do is see what the kind of demand is. I mean... Oh, God. Needs proof it's going to work. Qualifier. That's why he's fa that's why he failed. That's why the decade of failure. I need to know what's going to work before I try this new thing that would have been fucking huge. There's been a lot of views on them, but I wouldn't want to put like all that effort into it if only a couple thousand All that effort. You just said it was easy. Thousand people were gonna watch the videos, especially because it would be a lot more work to cut these audio commentaries and No it wouldn't. It. So I'd like some feedback, guys. Uh, everyone oh my god, we're getting feedback in two thousand and ten. I need buy-in in 2010. Holy shit, man. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. And it's not just SBO qualifiers, but maybe it's other tournaments, too, that I attend, like a Street Fighter IV or a tournament or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe if mm -hmm. I could dub what a genius. my opinions of what's going on in the matches. Uh, or Tuck. maybe I could even get some of the players who were in, in those matches to do commentary later on if you'd be interested in that. Let me know if that kind of thing would interest you. It might be a good idea for a, a future series. Never happened. Would not happen. Would have been huge. So, next question. Um, let's see. How would you feel about auctioning off the games that you've played? With the fans you have, there would probably be a market for autographed copies of the games you've played, and you'd probably get a better deal. Oh, Phil's going to love this. Autographed? Yeah, people might want that, but... Let's see what he says. ...than if you traded your games in. You could even throw in some merch as promotional items if the auction went... Shirt off fix, shirt line. fix. And that question is from a mysterious person who didn't leave any contact info. So <laughs> mysterious but didn't leave any contact info. Uh, mysterious person who didn't leave any contact info. It's a good idea, and you're not the first person to ask that question. In so fact, monkey itch, monkey itch. Friends, uh, in real life, basically say to me, "Why don't I do that?" Because I think that maybe if I sold, for example, 
uh, my copy of Fallout 3, or maybe a signed copy of the Fallout 3 strategy guide that I used when I was playing the game, oh or any God. of these games that I play. And usually, as you know, if you follow along my channels, I trade in my games to usually <laughs> game, my local GameStop after I beat them, and I get yeah. credit so that I can purchase future Seems games. Seems like a good fucking idea, dude. Them, because once you beat a game sufficiently, which is pretty much what I do when I beat a game, I go from start to finish and do most of the major things in the game. There's not a lot of replay value left. Those games I trade in to get more money rather than just have them sit on a shelf because what else are you going to do with that game? Um, and since I buy so many games, I definitely need to trade in the games to help uh, money-wise, you know, okay. to continue to buy the new games that come so... out. And especially, as you saw this year, I bought a gaming laptop. There's all kinds of other things I've been doing in order to bring more footage to you guys, so I need to cut corners and save money wherever I can. Um... And yeah, the potential is there that if I did say put up Can we answer the question? That I've played, yeah, here we maybe go. I make some money on them. Mm -hmm. Problem with that is it's more fucking work. Um, it's oh, not easy God. to constantly be putting up eBay auctions. Oh, keep track of this one, keep track of that one. When did this one end? When did that one end? Now I have to mail this. Too much work. Twice in a row. Good ideas or too much work? And the, just for the. Just let's get it right for the historians out there. The first idea was. With the same video you already recorded, just talk over it, you know, and give your insight. This one was selling the games you've already played. That's the two ideas that are too much work. Let's keep our eye on this one. This today, now I have to send this tomorrow, yada, yada, yada. I've got to send this today, i got to send this tomorrow, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's a whole rigmarole. It's hard to keep up with the Joneses, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm sending this one day, I'm sending this another day. Who can keep up with that? Pain in the ass. In fact, I used to have... A lot of stuff that I would sell on eBay, and I had a friend of mine who would do all the footwork for me, and I would give him a... Do all the footwork for me? I mean, I guess it makes sense, but is that what I'm saying? He'll do all the footwork for me. But you mean, like, grunt work or hard work for me? I don't know, but he did the footwork. <laughs> he did the fancy footwork. He was making... He was making wine with, with the grapes. He did all the footwork. Oh. Yeah, legwork. That's what he's looking for. Leg work. The money that I made, that was a long time ago, but uh, it's just, it's a lot of work. It really is. So uh -huh. for me to continue to pump out the videos like I do and to, you know, continue with my life as it is now and to start selling stuff on eBay like that would be way too much work. It would be out of control. Uh, out of control, dude. It's fucking out of control. Uh, and obviously, if I had someone who was adept at doing it or something like that, I would consider it. But right now, there's really no one that's, that, that I know that does it. And to be completely honest, it's not a big deal for me to just walk to, to the local GameStop and trade in the games. Oh, no, you know, I made $30 out of 60 that I spent instead of maybe selling it on eBay and making 40 or 50 bucks because I signed it or whatever. Not a big deal. Um, <laughs> now that's not to say that in the future that stuff might not go on sale. I've had some ideas of maybe, you know, hey, if I, if I go to a tournament... A big tournament, like let's say I go to Evo next year and I wear a uh -huh. jersey or whatever. Maybe you can buy the jersey online after. Oh, game worn, game worn. He wants to sell a game worn, <laughs> a turn, a tournament worn shirt. Tournament, like let's say I go to Evo next year and I wear a jersey or whatever. Maybe you can buy the jersey <laughs> online afterwards. I don't know. I've had ideas like that, or maybe even giveaways, cool giveaways. Yeah. Does that have the talcum powder on it for the ball scream? <laughs> What else did he bring? Remember, you got to get the uh, deodorant. Does that come with the yeah the baby powder for the armpits? Yeah, that's pretty hype, dude. I can't wait for that. Ways and things like that, like someone said, have an auction for something, but if it goes above a certain amount, there's a, an extra prize or something. It's not something that I've ruled out. It's definitely something I've thought about, but like I said, it's so much extra work. It's so much extra work to do that rather than just to go to the store and cake. Just take the game and give me some credit that I haven't looked into it yet, but it's a possibility in the future. Oh, uh, a couple more questions here. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, bear with me. I'm dying right now from this crab bisque that I ate, so... <laughs> I'm dying right now from the crab bisques that I ate when he knew he was... <laughs> he was lact... whatever percent lactose intolerant. Part. He says, part. <laughs> yeah, signed tournament chewed bag of meat. Yeah, the signed jerky. You can get a half-eaten jerky piece signed. <laughs> That'd be pretty hype. <laughs> Next question is from Samantha Rodriguez, and she says, "What is the job that you've always?" You can... <laughs> yeah, for for twenty dollars, you can take a tour of his his suites. He would get with one person, only him. 
For another 20, he could tell you how to use his USB hub. <laughs> These are all ideas. All money-making ideas he could have used. Give him $200, you can get the spare two beds he bought in the suite. <laughs> That's a pretty good money-making venture. Hey, pay me enough and you can sleep in the bed I got, because I don't have enough friends to fill the whole room. Cool? Always wanted. Well, Samantha Samantha Rodriguez, and she oh, said... Samantha Rodriguez, you guys caught it. I didn't. Samantha Rodriguez, shout outs. What is the job that you've always wanted? Well, Samantha, I'm glad that you asked me that question. Oh, of course we get proper side filler. Well, Samantha, great question. As someone who knows about females and is is, is, is ha, used to have girlfriends in the past and has some in the future, in the current times, let me tell you. I've always wanted to either be like a world dictator or maybe like a super villain, kind of like maybe an M. Bison, but maybe not. Maybe like the Joker, because a lot of people say ah, like the Joker. Ha, ha, Well, this is on brand. This is on brand. Trying to say anything, you know, anything to women, it always results in the worst jokes of all time. And fatality is right on time for that. She knows what's up. Contorts to a smile and they die like that. And then I go, motherfucker, you're dead, motherfucker. I want to die. I want <laughs> anyway, to uh, die. Yeah, so I would say either, you know, like total... Uh, you know, unchallenged control of the entire planet, or maybe like a super villain. Those would be the things that I've always wanted to do. Likes, everyone, Hilarious. That's the goal for the night. Hilarious. That was one of the worst jokes I've ever heard. Um, a couple more here. This one's from Guitar Shred UK, so someone else from the UK. And here's what he says. Along <laughs> oh, the Guitar Shred UK, this could be Sam. Listen closely, this could be Sam. Guitar Shred USA, he's a guitar player from the UK. You do the math. So bear with me. Well, it could be it was Steve's bass style. So no, the shredding is usually guitar style. This is probably Sam. Get listen up close. Hi Phil. Bioware announced yesterday, Thursday, July twenty second. So this was from a week or two ago. That there's another DLC episode on the way for Mass Effect Two, which looks really exciting. This takes a lot from the storyline of Mass Effect uh -huh. Redemption, the series of comics which detail. He spells her name Lara, which isn't her name. Her name's Liara. Uh, <laughs> That's a B rate, right? Come on, dude. It's spelling of a video game characters. I'm counting it. Fuck this guy. That's a, we're up to like six or seven. Uh, her pursuit of Shepard's body and her attempts to get him back in the two years that he is considered to be dead at the start of the game. Bioware also confirmed that Liara. Now he spells it right. Liara will now. <laughs> okay, now it's even more of a break. Now he spells it right. Now he gets it. The dumb fuck. Yeah, another member of your team. I, for one, am really stoked for this, particularly to see Liara's interactions with current members of the team, especially Samara, as we can see an oh, interesting on. meeting of two key Asari characters who have both had to take part in some serious... We need some kind of limit for, like, the dumbest shit questions. Views. If you remember, Liara had to attack man. Venezia in Mass Effect 1, and Samara had to kill her daughter Come on. in Mass Effect 2. So, given that the DLC may be some time away, what are your thoughts on this DLC... And the potential for one big centerpiece DLC that will bridge the gap between Mass Effect 2 and the one final bridging gaps. Who cares? Wow, that's a mouthful. Well, guitar shred. Uh, that's not what see Leanna said. UK. Here is my thoughts on the next DLC, which is going to have two Asari, uh, with you know, basically coming into the picture and having Liara but come back to a major part of the game. Uh -huh. Titties, 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 giant heaving. Jesus, I'm sorry, Samantha. Damn, Samantha. Just answer Samantha. What does that do? He gets so boned up, he just says titties 14,000 times. Titties, 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 titties. All right, just to remind everyone, the age is 28 years old right now. 28-year-old gentleman we're watching. Titties, 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 giant, heaving, blue breasts with... Oh, God, blue, blue breasts. Blue breasts. Blue breasts. Titties, 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 giant, heaving, blue breasts with blue veins going through them. Yes, oh. but yes, tits actually had veins animated in them in Mass Effect. Come on. Giant, bouncing fun bags and bosoms, and it's just been a long time, and I can't wait to see him come back. I can't wait for the Shadow Broker DLC. 
Oh. Okay. Oh. This question is from Pandora at Lemon Oh, Pandora. .com. And this question is, okay, I have a question for you. I'm a girl and I spend most of my <laughs> Let's see if we have more titties. Uh, she <laughs> hopes you heard that last segment. That was for her. Here we have a girl here. Another girl. Let's see if we get another amazing joke. Hang on. And this question is, okay, I have a question for you. I'm a girl and I spend most of my... Yeah, yeah. I will add something to that, Red. We're getting a lot of girls all of a sudden. Thank you for your membership. I appreciate that. We got Francisco. Good luck in the pool. video games, but a lot of people see... The only breasts that he has now are that of a dead turkey. Absolutely, from mommy. Oh God! What is this question? Playing video games, but a lot of people seem to think that girls shouldn't play video games. Oh God! Can I ban these fucking questions? What are Come your on, man. On well, Pandora, thank you for the question. I'm I hope you the Yeah, I stand for all women's rights. Shut up, dude. Females as well as males. Um, this is a chance to grandstand as being like, I'm, I'm my, what I say matters, so listen to my extremely important thoughts on this. As you know, females are a minority in the gaming world. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, you know, what is my thoughts on females playing video games? I don't think it's necessarily a, an issue of that girls shouldn't play video games. It's just that girls suck at video games. I mean, let's face it. It's always the guys who are sitting down and spending time playing the game competitively. Uh, it always seems to be like a guy kind of thing. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I almost. Oh, that's a berate, by the way, too. I'm counting that. I mean, what else could we call that? Fuck this guy. <laughs> She's not berated, but. Like sports. Like, sure, there are female <laughs> professional sports, but for the most part, it's the male sports that are viewed by the most people, seem to be like the most competitive. And it's kind of. Seem to be the most competitive. Okay. Kind of weird because at least in sports, your excuse is, well, you know, the males are supposed to. Okay, I didn't expect any of this. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. For the most part. It's the male sports that are viewed by the most people. Okay. Seems to be like the most competitive. And it's kind of weird because at least in sports, your excuse is, well, you Excuse is what? You know, the males are supposed to be stronger. They're supposed to be faster because they're supposed to be the protector of the family and the one that goes out and breaks their back and makes the money. So, old school Phil in the house. Okay. Traditionally, um, and that's why they excel as sports. But for video games, I don't know if that's the case because let's face it, video games really doesn't need a lot of physical ability it's more hand-eye coordination more uh -huh. thought process maybe reaction time yeah. so is there a real reason why there's such a massive amount of male people or males who play video games and are better at video games than this smaller group of females this is not had this is not what she was asking but okay i don't know um maybe when video games were first becoming popular she didn't ask who's better at video games males or females she asked why do, why are some people think girls shouldn't play games and he could have had a really cool sounding answer that was took like two brain cells to put together but instead he's making her feel like shit it was more of a geeky kind of thing and it was these computer programming guys into it and now that's, the the geeky. Thing, that's changing <laughs> um i don't know an interesting uh, twist on this topic is that evolution 2010 this year which is the national fighting game tournament for street fighter and uh -huh. other fighting games they actually had a females only super street My fighter sister's face tournament. is beautiful <laughs> yeah this is the this is the segment is dedicated to any crows in the audience tonight of course always crows always in the house i'm clicking all over the fucking place Go. and the stipulation was that in order to get into that tournament the female Snail trail gym. Had to at least enter the regular tournament as well which included both males and females and then if they did that, they had the option to enter this females-only tournament. Uh -huh. And actually, very few females even entered this tournament. A lot of them felt, like, self-conscious to do it. And uh, yeah, How would you know? You talked to so many. And, uh, it was kind of bullshit because a lot of people got a lot of... Or I, I want to say, a lot of people gave the girls a lot of shit for no fucking reason. Um, uh, actually, basically saying their gameplay was nowhere near as good as the males. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, your fucking horses here, sir. Uh, I forget what it's called. I will be searching this as this plays, though. A women's only tournament. I think there was... I'll keep listening, I'll keep looking. Gameplay, and to be completely honest, if you watch the footage, sure, they weren't as good as you know the top professional males would enter the tournament. But I'm also sure these girls weren't sitting there for fucking 
uh, you know, months on end since the game came out, like some of these guys were treating it like a professional job. Um, to get that in a second. Uh, and basically, you know, treating it like it was some kind of a important <laughs> thing. This is just something. Hello, could you get the phone? Cool for them to do. Yes, maybe they enjoy competitive games, but they weren't as hardcore into it as Hello. I, for one, don't necessarily believe there's any natural reason. Hello? That a guy should be better at a video game than a girl. Oh, God, please tell me they answer. So, I was actually happy to see this females only event. And please talk. Oh, God, they don't talk. <laughs> that a guy should be better no, at a video listen carefully. Game than a girl. So I was actually happy to see this females only event and you know, I said, Jesus Christ, someone's farting into my, my answering machine. Oh, come on, someone um, talk. I was personally happy to see this female event happen. I wish that more guys would support uh, women into video games rather than being very, you know. <laughs> Your father's uh, caught another fish. He wants to show it to you, Philip. Please answer. Stuff like that. Um, I think that it's equal opportunity, and I would love to see more women participate. And I think it should be an equal playing field. I don't think that any woman should feel intimidated to jump into video games. And uh, to your question, Pandora, you say, what are your thoughts? People think that girls shouldn't play video All games. Right. Thank you for re-upping your membership. I are you finally that. answering now? Big Ups Holly says, your wife is, is an actual hero. I bet she puts up with so much, plus you're old. Hey, it was fine till the end. Chu, someone's giving you credit for putting up with my, my th stuff in the office. Pandora, you say, what are your thoughts? People think that she just says, What someone said, you must you must go through a lot with me doing the show and you in the same room. Anything you want to say to them? Her name is Holly. She said, It's pretty bad, Holly. <laughs> we got to say something more positive. People are gonna freak out. That's a negative feeling. Come on, anything positive you can say to you for the lovely people watching us right now. She says no. All right, we'll keep the show going. <laughs> girls shouldn't play video games. That's preposterous. Why? I mean, that's just a fucking sexist ass attitude. And Wait, hold on. Let's go back here. We got to get this. Video games. That's preposterous. Why? I mean, that's just a fucking sexist ass attitude, and it needs to go away. It has no place uh -huh. in today's modern society. No place, dude. No place. Um, great guys, two more things. Two more things. The next one is actually from, you might, likes, notice, or you might recognize his name, John204. He's actually the guy who has taken those remixes of my voice from different game playthroughs um, that people, different people have made, like Ghost Drone 110 and other people, and he made them into ringtones. So he oh, actually ringtones? You want DSP ringtones? Hi. Ghost Drone 110 and other people, and he made them into ringtones. So he oh, actually cool. sent me a message. He said, hey, I want to say thanks, DSP, and especially to Ghost Drone 110, TK Plays, and the Maps Defect for allowing me to turn their songs into hit ringtones. I'd like to congratulate you, Phil, because your ringtone download count is now 49,345 total what tones the downloaded fuck? in only four months' time. That's over 10,000 ringtones downloaded a month. Holy Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, it makes sense because ringtones were hype back in the day, and most of his audience is like probably, I don't know, maybe the age where they first got one. I don't know, but damn, 49,000? That seems incredible. That seems like too many almost. Look at his face there. Holy I mean, shit. Over 10,000 ringtones downloaded a month. Holy shit. So that is fucking crazy, dude. So I guess the question now is, why the hell are more companies contacting me? Because obviously if I can sell 50,000 ringtones in four months, there's some potential there to make money. And why isn't my phone blowing up with these offers? Yeah, so that other guy sounds like he's making the money. Um, That's crazy. And I'm just... Thank you, John, for doing that. You didn't have to make ringtones out of that stuff. I know that was time out of your day to set that up. And I know that you gave them away for free, which is, I mean, amazing. Oh, so okay, lot, okay, man. okay, because they're free. So no one's even getting any money out of this. So he just lied himself saying he bought that many. It was free. I mean, yeah. You don't get a fucking free one. And, uh, everyone, thank you for participating. That was great. I wish that... You know, my, my fans, you know, I, I love... If you make fun of any stream <laughs> chatter, Derek or otherwise, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> You're a fucking loser, dude. Big ups, D-Dog. says, hello, Mr. Brunel. Hi, you don't know me. I call myself IOC. I heard I can call your landline. It is the best place to send you tips over the phone as smartphones are not invented yet. Dude, that'd be hype. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> that'd be a good fanfic. You know, OIC calling from the future. Listen, you don't know who I am, but I'd like to make a donation. <laughs> when these guys make these songs, these remixes, I think they're really original. And, uh... 
I hope that they make more in the future. I hope that you can take stuff from other video game playthroughs. Uh -huh. I know that it could be hard, especially with games that have constant music or a lot of sound effects, to take those voice clips and isolate them and make them into a song. But so far, it's been pretty cool. It's been pretty successful. So thanks a lot, and I hope to see that in the future. I sold 49,000 ringtones for zero cents. Um, all right, so I guess that's pretty much it. But uh, I guess there's one other question. Uh-oh. Shh. Why? Everyone keeps asking me. Oh, God, get your fucking cringe meter on now. Strap it on. Strap your cringe belt on. What happened to Project 7? Yeah, what happened to Project 7? It's not just a couple people. It's everyone. You know, my friends offline, you know, off of YouTube ask me, what's Project 7? When are you going to start up? Shh. Keep it on the down low. Maybe. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. But what I will say is like look how much ambition there was, you know? Like the the creativity there has not been seen like since this, you know? Saw music hype. Like that's creativity has not been seen, you know? But yeah, like th there's some other stuff he could have edited out that he clearly didn't want, didn't do. But it's like, I mean, it's not even creative, but it's still, it's like their thought went into making this little bit. When's the last time that happened? Right? It doesn't happen anymore. There is no bits. All right, let's go. Episode three. Episode three. We'll probably end it with episode three because this is a longer one. Uh, this took place only twenty one days after what we just saw. Somehow it looks with Tampa Bay Lightning shirt on. <laughs> this looks weird, but all right, let's go. What's up, everybody? It's DSP uh, with another edition of DSP Inbox, where basically I answer all of your questions that the, you send the, to me. <laughs> I love that the, the angle is changing so much here. <laughs> it's very funny. At the email address, DSP Inbox at Hotmail.com. Um, oh, oh, dude, why do we have to do these, these shirt moves? Take care of these shirt moves before you fucking record. It looks bad. What is this? Look at this pool. Guys, my sister's <laughs> not being abused. Because Black Mage, I hope every kid with a DSP ringtone got a knuckle sandwich. Hey, guys, check out my ringtone. It's hype. Oh, really? I got the, uh, you know, <laughs> I got the fucking uh, new kids on the block on mine. Oh, cool. I paid a dollar for mine. These are free, dude. I downloaded 49,000 times. Answer <laughs> all of your questions that you sent to me at the email address. DSP. New Kids on the Block was a very stupid reference. Very stupid. I should have said sync. Box at Hotmail.com. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I did pool, one of these pool. videos because, as I explained in a channel update I made yesterday, I've been pretty busy with a lot of different stuff going on, and I got caught up with a bunch of games that really ended up being a lot longer than I thought they were going to be. Uh, but anyway, I've been compiling this list. Okay. And, uh, I just want you to bear with me because number one, it's hot in here, but I turned off the air conditioner so that it would sound better. Obviously, if I'm answering questions, you want it to sound as good. <laughs> oh, because episode two was definitely air conditioned to the max. If you want to just get okay, proof. I have a question for you. It's rolling. Girl, and I spent most of my time it's rolling. So What's you wanted to fix that. Yesterday, I've been pretty busy with a lot of different stuff going. Be, uh, but anyway, I've been compiling this list. Uh -huh, compiling. And, uh, I just want you to bear with me because number one, it's hot in here, but I turned off the air conditioner so that it would sound better. Obviously, if I'm answering questions, you want it to sound as good as possible. So if I start sweating bullets, you know why. And uh, I also have my Powerade right here next to me if I need a little refreshment. Um, <laughs> Shut the fuck up. But the other thing is, good questions this time, I have to say. Now, it's been a while, it's been Ooh. almost a month since the last one of these that I did. Actually, I think it has been a month. But, uh... As you see, I'm going to go through a lot of questions, so bear with me. Mm, We're going to get through them. That um, kind of counts. It's going to probably be a long video, but a lot of these questions are really, really good. In fact, some of these are <laughs> things that I've actually had people ask me in messages and things, and I kind of wanted to respond and have had a chance, so this is my chance. So really cool. Let's jump right into it and uh, start answering your questions. Was that, a, was that a paper flap or not? It's very close for me, but I'm, I'm okay with going for it. <clears throat> and no, I'm not wearing short shorts or boxers. These are, you know... Uh, that's because you got called out. Now he's going to talk about it. Now you got to talk about it. <laughs> <clears throat> and no, I'm not wearing short shorts or boxers. These are, you know, short, uh, casual shorts that you can wear around the place when it's hot. <laughs> he's going to explain shorts. 
Get ready. He's going to tell us about shorts. <laughs> what are shorts for? <laughs> Excuse me? What are shorts for? These are, you know, short, uh, casual shorts that you can wear around the place when it's hot. And uh -huh. a lot of people in one of these videos, I wore something like this. And people said, oh, my God, he's sitting there in his underpants or whatever. No, I have underwear on underneath. So, you fucking fags, calm down. Um, <laughs> Dude, that it takes a special level of having no self confidence to need to explain yourself wearing shorts. Okay, I have my underwear under that. Okay, thank you. Okay, fuck you, faggot. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, all right. You just don't even acknowledge it and move on. <laughs> Question number one, dear Phil, in the ten worst gaming moments of two thousand nine, you said that you would no longer be playing any games made by Rockstar. But then why did you do gameplay of Red Dead Redemption? I thought. Oh, okay, that's a good question. Great we're question. Both Rockstar Games, and that's from. Uh, well, that's not true. Contreras ninety seven at aol dot com. Well, oh, go well, shout outs to the email. Why are you saying the email? Shout outs to giving out emails. All right, sorry everybody. Sorry for doxing that person. See Contreras, good question because you're absolutely right. For anyone who doesn't know what he's talking about, go check out my top ten worst gaming moments of two thousand nine on my main Dark Side Phil page. Um, God. My number one worst gaming moment was basically when it seemed that Take Two Games uh, had given me a copyright strike against my Dark Side Phil channel for putting up footage of the Grand Theft Auto 4 expansion, The Lost and Damned, last yes. year in 2009 when I was doing oh, my God damn it, no it. stars. Um, but now that I have a lot more experience with these copyright claims, what I'm really finding is I don't think. Any of these claims have ever been put against me and probably ever put against anyone on YouTube for game footage have ever been legit. Um, if you remember earlier this year, my channel got shut down because of an Ubisoft copyright claim. <laughs> Ubisoft. That got cleaned up and they said absolutely not, it wasn't us. Well, after that happened, hot on the heels of that, I basically did counter notices against all those copyright claims that supposedly Take-Two had given me in 2009 for the Lost and Damned playthrough, and all those were cleared up by YouTube. Okay. And then subsequently... My last chapter, it's funny that he actually mentions oh, my... It's funny. What's funny? Red Dead Redemption playthrough. The very last chapter of that playthrough also got supposedly a copyright claim from Take-Two Games. So in my honest opinion, I don't think that it was Rockstar or Take-Two or anyone like that who's been doing it. I think it's malicious people who oh. basically are jealous, are oh. haters, oh. people who just want to shit on your fucking in the middle of your living room floor and you Ooh, no. you to day and give you a bad Please experience. Subscribe. Those are the people that are out there. And yeah, it's pretty sad, but there are people who think that because they can fool a site like YouTube into thinking that there's a copyright claim against uh -huh. someone, they see that as like power. And they're like, yes, I have no real power in my real life because I'm a fucking loser who lives in his parents' basement. Oh, I can do this. I can fuck him this way, and that's how I'm gonna. Oh God, I can fuck him that way. Ace, damn. To get off because I feel like I have some kind. Of he can fuck him that way and then get off. Hold on a second here. Hang on a minute. But I can do this. I can fuck him this way, and that's how I'm gonna get off. Because... <laughs> All right, it was it was a one clip. All right, we'll play it again. Last chance to get clip it, everybody. So the quote is. I can fuck them this way, and I can get off. You can take the meaning whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want. It's up to you. Parents' basement, but I can do this. I can fuck them this way, and that's how I'm going to get off, because I feel like <laughs> I have some kind of virtual power by fooling the website. <laughs> nice. There are actually malicious people like that, if you can believe it, in the world. Not so. Oh, wow. Anyway, I really don't think any company has ever legitimately put a claim against me. I kind of have to apologize if this is the case, to take two games and Rockstar because if they didn't do it, then they're going to say, and, you know, I really point, shouldn't have gone off on them like I did last year. However, I didn't hear anything from them either, so obviously they really didn't give a shit. Um, <laughs> they didn't really get it. And so. I was so pissed at them last year, so that's that. That's why I played Red Dead Redemption. If you notice, though, I did make its own channel, Red Dead DSP, when I did that to make sure that if there were any copyright claims, they wouldn't go against Oh, yeah, so that's why he made those separate channels was to avoid copyright claims. So if copyright claims would only shut down that channel, not his main channel. Any of my main channels, and it turns out that it ended up getting one claim, which I cleared up, like I already explained. So anyway, that's only one question. Let's keep going. We A lot of people did silly stuff like back in the day to avoid um, copyright claims of shutting down your channel. Like that guy with the glasses would have a different YouTube channel for each video back in the day. To have, like if that, if one... You know, video got claimed, 
you could just take down that channel and not lose it. That's really people were doing stupid shit back in the day. But anyways, look at this. <laughs> oh, we got plenty to cover. Uh huh. Plenty to cover. Up oh, next, the next question is: since the year is about halfway done, and a lot of tuck. I, we we kind of need a shirt tuck counter. I, the more I'm seeing it, the more I want to think about it. These sneak tucks or untucks, I should say. Done, and a lot of major Ooh. games have. Like I want to get like a pistol sound for that. Okay, I'm getting it now. I, I can't. It's too funny idea to not get. Uh, guns. I'll find it for the next one. You got to get that. Like the we got to get the 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 loading of the gun and then the boom. <laughs> Come out. Out of all of those, which do you consider to be game of the year so far? In my opinion, the two best ones are Mass Effect 2 and Red Dead Redemption. I'm okay. switching more to the Mass Effect 2 side. Also, I wanted to know which games do you think are the top for this year so far. Well, that's the same question. But anyway, thank that's you. That's a Brie Ray. Um, you're absolutely right. First of all, Big Ups Breezy Style. This is a huge bomb. It's a huge bomb. Legend. Breezy Style in the house. Congratulations to Amar Vance on that one. We got the producer Chu. Shout out to Chu with that. Well, it's not in the middle of the year. We're past the middle of the year. We're Legend, in the dude. Thank quarter, you, baby. And once you hit fourth quarter, um, you know this is the hardcore time for games. And we're just well, actually I take it back. We're one month away from fourth quarter, but this is it. Prime time. All the new games are coming out. Um, fourth quarter, baby. So far this year, what did I enjoy the most? I definitely have to say, Heavy Rain is way Thank up there. Thank you very much for the engagement I today. It a lot. I appreciate I it. it. was unique. I thought uh -oh. that it just 100. had a gripping story. The graphics, the voice acting, atmosphere, everything about that game was amazing. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed that, like I said earlier this year, when they canceled, it wasn't the rest a very good one. It kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie. Game, because Sony wants them to make motion controls for it. <laughs> I really was disappointed. I motion engine. I wanted more. And uh, now there's not going to be any more, unfortunately. So, mm -hmm. uh, definitely. I'd say Mass Effect 2 is up there. Is it really Game of the Year material for me? I'm not sure. I mean, it was good. But a lot of the game focused solely on the, the uh, side missions. The characters who you could recruit for your, your team. Rather than really focusing on the main Give missions. Clue. Which I found really odd. If you Actually, if you think about it. The main missions, there's only like five or six of them in the entire game. So technically, if you know you know how to get around it, you can probably beat the game fairly quickly without unlocking everyone. Mm -hmm. and obviously, you're not going to save everyone and then get the best oh, ending. God. But still, I was really disappointed that the story didn't focus more on the main story of the Reapers. Uh, the Reapers Me from face. Mass Effect 1 kind of went face. on a tangent. So. But it was still good. The gameplay was much improved. The story was great. Up. Who um, cares? I have to say Red Dead Redemption is definitely up there. Um, again, anytime that it seems Rockstar touches one of these open world games, they strike goal. And taking that open gold, world dude. aspect into the Wild West basically made for the best Wild West game ever created. And uh, I was very... Best Wild West game ever created. Uh, thrilled with that game. I prefer Oregon, Oregon Trail. And all the antics that we did afterwards as well with the Suicide Kings and things like that. Um, some other games, definitely Super Street Fighter 4. I know I haven't gotten enough time really to touch it and play it as much as I wanted to, but from all feedback, people basically say this is much better than the original Street Fighter 4. Capcom listened Come to Come on, gamers. I'm getting bored. They nerfed Saget. They made some characters... They nerfed Saget. ...characters better, some characters worse, but the game seems a lot more balanced and a lot more <laughs> fun now. I think it's the best fighter on the market today. Uh, for a common, you know, for, for current generation fighters, that is. Obviously, if you want to ask what the best fighting game of all time is, I'm <laughs> Yeah, that's, like, that Saget to me is just Bob Saget. That's only, that's the only Saget I know. When they kicked him off the, 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 when they kicked him off of fucking the show, that's when he got nerfed. <laughs> uh, full house, of course, Fighters I mean. Turbo. That's just my opinion. Uh -huh. um, and there are a couple others, too. A couple things that were surprises that were a lot better than I thought they were going to be. Uh -huh. um, no one cares. Year. But I said it's probably right now. That's what's in the top of my mind from what I've played. But keep in mind, we're kicking it into Overdrive. I mean, you got the new Spider-Man game. You got the new <laughs> kicking Overdrive. Fallout game. Fable 3. The new Force Unleashed. Um, just so uh, doesn't that, by the way, so Black Doom saying here, always saying the name's wrong. Doesn't that lead you to believe that he doesn't have, like, especially in that kind of community, man. Everyone knows how to say everything, right? Like, you know, you know how to say the people's names. And you would learn the common way to say it if you talked with other people that were doing that same thing. And because you'd probably get, like, berated from fucking up. You know, like, what, what the fuck are you saying? It's not sag, sag it. But if you don't have anyone tell you that, you would continue thinking that's how you say stuff. You know, that's how you say the name, whatever your first thought is. So much is coming up. Halo, which could be a, a, a very good game. Who knows? It doesn't have to be another ODST. Uh, there's just so much coming out. Dead Rising 2. Um, so I don't know. 
It could really, you know, what I think now is the best game of the year could totally change in, in a couple weeks. Oh, wow. Months. Imagine so that. We'll see what happens. Great question. Next question. Uh, pinky, pinky, my pinky. Question pinky. Is, do you still actively watch wrestling? Uh, oh, when God. You start watching it, and I guess I'm assuming you mean professional wrestling. Uh, no. Well, oh, come on, man. No. I mean, on the mat. I mean, high school wrestling tournaments. Yeah, I mean the Olympic wrestling. Uh huh. Yeah, that's exactly what he meant. Yeah, I want to see the Olympic wrestling. Wrestling. Uh, when did you start watching it? And I guess assuming he's <laughs> professional wrestling. Uh, what are your favorite <laughs> professional wrestling? Yeah, exactly. Favorite wrestlers and storylines, both past and present. And what are your thoughts on the current product of the WWE? Oh, hang on your butts here. He's already engorging up. Keep up the great commentary, Mark. Good question, Mark. Because you notice in a lot of my videos, I good question, gang. Good question. Um, been a fan of WWE for a long time. Been a fan? Been a fan. Time. I used to watch reference wrestling. Um, been a fan of WWE for <laughs> You heard that, right? I'm not going that crazy. Being a fan. Being a fan. <laughs> In a lot of my videos, I do reference wrestling. Um, been a fan of WWE for a long <laughs> time. I used to watch it when I was a little kid. Grew up with Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart. Been a fan. Been a fan. Those guys. <laughs> And that, you know, then kind of took a, a hiatus during high school and college. We kind of got a little bit back into it after that um, as the product changed. I am a fan of it. I do watch WWE programming. I usually watch Raw. WWE programming? On SmackDown when I get a chance. I TiVo them so I get to watch them whenever I want. Nice. And actually, John Rambo is a fan too. So we actually Shout go out. back and forth. We actually at one point teased the idea of doing a... Ooh, they teased each other. What was the idea they teased? Wrestling show maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks. To talk about different pay-per-views. Oh, what, that might be something like some kind of idea. That could have some legs. To talk about what's going on in the wrestling industry and our opinions. That could have some games. We don't know if there would be any kind of interest in that kind of thing. Because obviously this is mostly everything I've done has been gaming related. So, But that's interesting. Give me some feedback on what you think. Um, favorite wrestlers of all time. I really don't even want to say because I've been through basically four different. Can you please answer a question? Eras of wrestling. And I can't really. So that means you don't have a favorite. There's been so many eras. I don't have a favorite. Come on, man. Say, but I would say, you know, the whole Degeneration X storyline was great. Yeah, oh, that's what I. That's the guy that created my entire life. The DX storyline <laughs> changed my life, brother. <laughs> NWO storyline was great, but everyone says that. Uh, currently today, I honestly think that. Okay, we have a pedestal segment. Get ready. Modern wrestling. In the... <laughs> This is a this is a twenty eight year old gentleman telling us about modern wrestling, and this is the pose we have here. Past say five to ten years has really sucked oh, until this new no. angle with the Nexus, which is going on Monday Night Raw right now. Basically, you know, seven up and comers who were on a show supposed to be a reality show of you know whoever's going to win gets a contract or whatever for WWE, and instead of going along with that, someone said, "I got a great idea. Let's turn these guys into a stable." A bad guy heel stable uh -oh. to do whatever the hell they want and try to invade the WWE shows. And they've been doing this for several months. It's been a very successful angle. And for the first time, when they get in the ring and they actually wrestle matches rather than just beating people down. It's hot as shit, dude. I bone right up. You actually, they, they sell themselves and they look well in the ring. And I think it's one of the best people <laughs> down. You actually. They look well in the ring. Both grammar and sexuality confused here. They look well in the ring. <laughs> Hold on, I'll just let me play one more time. I don't want to put it, take anything out of context. Shows. And they've been doing this for several months. It's been a very successful angle. And for the first time, when they get in the ring and they actually wrestle in matches rather than just beating people down, you actually, they, they sell themselves and they look well in the ring. And I think it's one of the best ways that <laughs> WWE has started to push new talent because in previous times they tried to push this new guy and he looks really green. He looks awful, and then somehow he starts winning matches, and you're like, give me a break. <laughs> These guys, they built them up enough. I think they gave them a lot of on-the-road practice. <laughs> they gave them a lot of on-the-road practice. And now they actually look kind of polished because they've been going along with Nah, them. he's talking about the wrestling skill, of course. He's talking about the wrestling skill. Talent for weeks and weeks. I'm really liking where this angle's going. I can't wait to see where it goes in the future. So right now, my favorite angle right now is the Nexus. But let me know what you think about wrestling. Um, and if you think that it might be a good idea for us to do maybe like a wrestling commentary once a month oh, or something like that. You could, you could title it Smart Guys. I recommend the Smart Guys moniker. It might be something I consider doing. Okay. Ooh, sorry Next about that. Nice question. One it says, I was on Sure You Can the other day, and I saw a bunch of guys with old join dates talking trash about you. So he's talking... 
Oh, here we go. I didn't expect the question about this. Yep. Oh, so this person put this question perfectly. So you can't say like, oh, these new guys, these assholes. He's talking about the OGs talking shit about you. What are you going to explain about this? Let's go. The other day, and I saw a bunch of guys with old join dates talking trash about you. So he's talking, he's probably saying there's people that seem to be a, have been part of the show. You can die uh-huh. for quite a long time. And yes. Talking trash about uh-huh. you. Uh-huh. So what are you going to say about that, sir? I've been sir? part of the show, you can dot com community for quite a long time, and they were talking trash about me. I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, so naturally, I was like, what the fuck? I tried to ask him what the <laughs> So naturally, was. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Thanks, flying monkey. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my God. What are these mannerisms here? This, this one. He is either. He's on something. Okay, let's surprised. go. Uh-huh. Uh, so naturally, I was like, what the fuck? I tried asking what their problem was, and they just told me, oh, you don't know him from back in the day. It's a long story. Anyway, I'm assuming there's a history between you and the fighting game community. No, not between the fighting game community. Between me and the shoryukin.com community. Let's get that straight. Oh, okay. Like, they're separate. Okay. It seems like you've had haters even before you were on YouTube. Absolutely. Is that a flex? I mean, let's hear how he talks about his... Okay, yeah, yes, you've had haters even before you had a YouTube. So what does that tell you? This is how you became known as the king of hate. Sincerely, Rich. Well, Rich, it's a long story. Oh, is this, oh, this is a review tech. Review tech question. Long story, I'm not going to get into it. Let me put it to you this way. Everyone fucking hates my guts. It's my fault. And yeah, so there you go. It is what it is. There you go. Next question. Way before I even thought of putting a video on YouTube, I was a prominent person in the show, you can.com. Street Fighter <laughs> community. I started out as just a, a, a prominent meaning. I have the most posts because that's the probably the only record you have. I'm a prominent rec member. You definitely had five accounts, so you just post the most. So met me again. So, well, whoever fucking said it, don't mistake activity for achievement. That's our. That's what we're going away with today. That's our takeaway. Don't mistake activity for achievement. A <laughs> uh, 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 big mouth who sucked started going to tournaments. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Started out as just a a a, a, a big mouth who sucked. Started going to tournaments. Actually, got good. Started winning at tournaments and placing at tournaments. Mm-hmm. And this was, I'd probably say, around the year two thousand. Uh, as time progressed, I actually started traveling around the country to play. Uh-huh. And uh, that's where know, the credit card. That's where the cash advances come in. It'd be funny because I would always be considered the underdog, and if I beat anyone good, it would be like a massive upset, and everyone would get all upset and say it was luck or whatever. But <laughs> so this is him talking about fourth place, I guess, like without explaining it really, like not going that deep into it. But people were upset because the underdog won. That's what I think he's saying there. That's my guess. I was never afraid to speak my mind. I was always talking shit. Uh-huh. I, was al- I was always af- not afraid to talk shit in forums that had nothing to do with me. Uh huh. Always, you know, basically saying whatever I wanted and, and really meaning it, just like I do on YouTube. When I say stuff, I- so you really meant it. Now was not a character. Really meant on it. YouTube, I mean it. I'm not going to censor myself or hold myself back. I say what I think is 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 the truth. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't like that. You know, a lot of people just don't like that. Mm, no. Nah. No, it wasn't just say it's not just saying what your feeling is. It's uh being consistently being an ungrateful asshole every single post you could in every situation you could. And uh yeah, I'm gonna admit there were times when I went out of control and you know, I went got all crazy and fucking you know, we said really nasty things about people. But that's just part of it. That's part of <laughs> That's just part of it. Building hype. That's part of, you know, really nasty things about people. But that's just part of it. That's part of building hype. That's part of, you know, when there was a local tournament in New Jersey. So was- I'm not afraid to speak my mind, but it was building hype. Not afraid to speak my mind, building hype. Just keep up, all right? It's, par- it's hard to keep up, but you got to keep up with it. He was not afraid to speak his mind, but he was building hype. Hey, well, okay. I hate this motherfucker, and I'm going to bet him $200 in a money match. And next thing you know, there would be... <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, I lost. I was down $200, but there was hype. Is that where we're going with this, sir? There was hype. I lost 300 bucks, but it was fucking hype. Okay. Say, well, I hate this motherfucker, and I'm going to bet him $200 in a money match. And uh-huh. next thing you know, there would be massive hype for this tournament in New Jersey because everyone wanted to see me play this guy for a massive amount of money. So, 
that's kind of, you know, the deal. Sni finger sniff? Deal. And a lot of people like that, and a lot of people thought, oh, he's just an attention whore, whatever. Um, but the bottom line is, that changed hey. over time, and, Go you know, in. mid-2000 to the late uh, 2000s, I became more of a, a figurehead in the community, especially on the East Coast. I started running major tournaments. I ran the East Coast Championships one year. Yeah, uh, you did one year. Uh, Josh Wakefall, who's my friend from New York, also a very good marble player. Um, and since then, I, I had a lot of local tournaments in New York, Connecticut, things that I was doing. I was respected. And uh, <laughs> I was respected. That's the one thing you never were from anybody on SRK, except for the people that found you from YouTube alone. That is confirmed, brother. I had a lot of local tournaments in New York, Connecticut, things that I was doing. I was respected. And uh -huh. uh, basically, a lot of people started to trust in my word, especially when it came to Super Turbo. And uh, I think really where the cookie crumbled, so to speak, is <laughs> there. I had a major a cookie crumbled. What? I think really where the cookie crumbled, so to speak, is there. I had a major dispute with the people who run it, SureYouCan.com. Canon Brothers. Because one of them actually had written netcode for his online service. You might have heard of it. It's called GGPO. GGPO, you ever heard of it? I hate it. That's what he's going to say here. <laughs> you ever heard of it? It sucks, okay? Uh, and a lot of people use that online. They say, wow, it's pretty good. It's not very laggy. The truth is, uh -oh. GGPO is a very good netcode, but it masks lag. It, it does exactly what it tells you it's going to do. It makes it... <laughs> ma okay, so masking lag is a negative again. Here we go. And that's why when you play GGPO, it feels different than playing, say, Street Fighter 4 uh -huh. online. Street Fighter 4 might slow down or drop inputs. Well, GGPO also drops inputs, but it masks it very well. Uh, and so, so what do you want? You'd rather just feel like you're playing in quicksand the whole time? So I kind of called them out on that on the forum, and I said, you know, everyone here is kissing well, their ass. We already, we already went through that forum in the Cannon Brothers episode. It's really good. Don't get me wrong. It's the best netcode, but it's not as good good as everyone thinks it's cracked up to be it still drops inputs it still has these problems i wish we would focus it does yeah it, <laughs> yeah it doesn't drop inputs good point rest jam it's not doesn't drop inputs it makes sure the visual of that input comes on your screen in a smooth fashion uh, in in the right you know at the right time it gets to where it's supposed to be at the right time you know it's that fucking video explains it better than i am right it's now not solving those problems rather than it makes sure you don't drop those inputs thinking we found the holy grail and of course when i did that Everything exploded. Apparently, there were already talks to try to sell that netcode to Capcom for their games. And so they were like, oh, now DSP opened his big mouth. He blew it. I ended up getting banned from SRK for several years. Uh, several years? You were banned for multiple times. You signed up with new accounts. I had a bad relationship between myself and the people who run SureYouCan.com. And, and by the way, if I remember correctly, they didn't even sell their netcode. They just gave it to them, right? It's not just for that. There's been, I mean... Year-long disputes. Ever since the first time I met the people in person, we had a dispute about money, about Justin Wong, if you can believe it. Uh-oh! When I went to my first West Coast tournament in California, it was the first year that Justin Wong had gone out there and started actually winning every Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament. He won the tournament, and then when they gave him his money, they, sh they basically shortchanged him. And I called it out. I said, wait, 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 wait. Let's do the math here. And I did the math, and it was actually myself and, and Henry Sen, also from New York, who both did the math in our head and said... This isn't right. He got gypped several hundred dollars. Never heard this. this is new lore here. Dollars from when he was supposed to win this tournament. We called him out, and basically we were told by... Okay, Frog Machine. They were trying to sell the concept of rollback, not the source code. Okay. Sure, you can dot com staff that we're idiots. We don't know what we're talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Called him out, and basically several hundred dollars... For when he was supposed to win this tournament, we called him out, and basically we were told by the SureYouCan.com staff that we're idiots. Cannon Brothers, say their name. About. We don't know how to count. It said on the website. <laughs> they don't, we don't know how to count. All this information about how the arcade that this event was held at was going to take money and a cut and things like that. And by the bottom line, the website uh -oh. never said it. They actually went back to the website and had to publicly apologize later on because they realized they fucked up. But ever since then, it's kind of been like we have bad blood between us. And. <laughs> Bad blood. They're so far up, they can't even punch down. At this point in my life, I don't give a fuck about it anymore. Oh, <laughs> you would be complaining about it 13 years later. <laughs> you want to be them so badly, it's lasted you 13 years, you're still not there, sir. I, see, I haven't gone to Evo in a long time. I haven't really traveled to go to tournaments in quite a long time, except for the Super Battle Opera qualifier this year. 
And to me, it's just it's just water under the bridge. I really don't give a shit. Oh, cool. Um, I was going to actually go to Evo this year, but I decided not to because of the whole thing going on with Super Battle Opera. And a lot of people have asked me, well, you know, what's going on with Sure You Can? Are you ever going to come back? I'm never coming back to Sure You Can full time. I'm done with that community. <laughs> full time? He would absolutely post there way later. Uh, let's just do a quick search of that because I can confirm it. Uh, let's see. King of Hate HD. <laughs> This this took place in let's see August twenty third. Uh, so it is called. I think his web his screen name was the King of Hate HD, the King of oh King, not the King of the Hate, the King of Hate HD. And let's see his final post on the site. This is worth it. Final post on the site would take place in. Uh, not there yet. I'll get there eventually. His last post took place in March 12th. <laughs> March 12th. Two years later after this. Okay. I would not take part any full way. <laughs> because there's too many people there who just believe whatever they're told. Uh -huh. And so for your question, uh, Rich, you know, you're asking... I'm done with it. Fuck SRK, dude. Post in there two years later. Me because they think it's the cool thing to do on showyoucan.com. Because there's a lot of people there. <laughs> it's the cool thing to do. It's the fun thing to do. <laughs> Support that's how much longer. We're definitely done by 11. We got 40 minutes left tops. A lot of people just hate on me because they think it's the cool thing to do on showyoucan.com. Because there's a lot of people there. <laughs> it's so fucking fun. The people who run the website. You get addicted, dude. It's awesome. And, and they're like, oh, it's the cool thing to do is hate on DSP because <laughs> the, the people who own the site don't like him that much. Well, oh wow! He thinks it's because the people that own the site don't like him. That's why it's cool. <laughs> well, it's become like a kind of like a hobby now for these idiots. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's the hobby. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the truth. And um, so yeah. Uh, it, uh, so yeah. Uh, do you understand yet why I'm not actually bad a bad person? Have I give you enough shit yet? So you don't think I'm an asshole? That's all I'm going for here. Give me some kind of sign. Email asker. It's a pain in the ass, and I have to deal with it. Uh, but I don't care. And I figured maybe I'll go to Evo one more time. It might be next year, 2011. And this will never happen. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's that. You know, that's the story. It's Dude, I got two fucking flies flying around my condo right now. There's one just went one way and one went the other. Two flies? The fruit flies. The grandparents of the fruit flies are here in Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Oh, pain in the ass. I'd just be sneaking in on the door or something. But anyway. Oh, okay, God. Check the seal on the door. Like, did that fucking, what's it called? Circuit City. Oh, uh, that's the story with that. She, yeah, there's a lot more to it. it Two big flies. But I'm not going to get too far into it because obviously I don't want to bore you. Uh, excuse you. Are you making a video or are you watching the fucking flies? Uh, but that's the gist of it. And uh, I might go to Evo one more time, but basically I'm kind of done from being a major part of that community simply because there's too many idiots and assholes who jump on this hate on DSP bandwagon without really knowing me, without really knowing what I'm... Hate on DSP bandwagon was came out of his mouth in 2010. But yep, evil AJ, wow. right? And that's why a lot of people, when they came to YouTube and they saw me, and they're like, isn't this the guy who everyone hates? And then when they started watching, they're like, wow, you know, he's actually not that bad of a guy. How many words can we stuff in other people's mouths? Because everyone basically lies and spreads rumors and makes yep. shit up, so... Uh-huh, exactly. What are you gonna do, gonna do dude? Okay. It happens Be to all... Of, it happens to everybody. Just, it happens to fucking everybody, right? Everyone has to go through that. At this point in my life, I don't give a fuck about it anymore. As you say, I haven't gone to Evo. In a Whatever. Right, here we go. Okay, next question. Here we go. Next question. With all the video playthroughs, commentaries, and opinions and reviews that you do, I was wondering why you don't have your own website relating to gaming. Is this something? Oh, these are all things he wanted to answer. By the way, <laughs> it's so fucked up. Oh yes, yeah, so, uh, speaking of making a website, DSP Gaming. You've thought about or thinking about. If not, then how come? From Craig Walker. Um, I've already addressed this before, but I might as well address it again publicly. Come <laughs> from creating the gaming. Is this something you've thought about or thinking about? If not, then how come from Craig Walker? Um, I've already addressed this before, but I might as well address it again publicly. Running a website is hard. Okay, <laughs> running a website, especially with the amount of people that would probably be drawn to my website. Oh God, for someone like me, it'd be really tough, dude. Super tough, and super fucking tough, dude. If you're someone like me, it's super tough to have a website, you know what I'm saying? You're pain in the ass, you know, a lot of time and effort to make sure that it's clean, there's not people taking, trying to take it over, spamming it, and 
Also, I need to use YouTube. I need YouTube for web hosting for my videos. Uh -huh. I'm not going to be able to set up my own website and host my own videos. It's going to be way too expensive. So basically, all the page would be is me. <laughs> oh, God. He was thinking about making his own website. He's making his video hoster. Linking my videos from YouTube. In which case, who cares if I have my own page or if I have a YouTube page? Now, the only thing that's lacking, I guess, would be a forum. Yeah. Uh, where people can chat and talk about all the things that I, that I play the games. And what I, about one of those? Playing things like that. But I'm not really too too worried about that. Um, and like I said, it's expensive as well. If you get a website that has traffic, like mine would probably have, it would be oh. very expensive to keep it up and running. I'm not, like I said, YouTube is... This is how long ago he thought he has to pay, play a lot of, pay a lot of money to have those fucking forums. And he still pays for thousands to this day. He thought they're, you know, like he is, he has this idea that they're very expensive, you know, and that's just the way it is. Because I, that's what I think. Enough for me. If sometime down the road I want to turn this into a full time business, uh -oh. this is going to be my job. Whoa. Then I might consider setting up a website. But being this is just my hobby, and I do it in my spare time. Oh, God. Time. <laughs> God. That wasn't a tuck, so I can't play my new sound effect, but he did the, 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 the wipe. Way too time consuming and expensive. What's the flatten? But being this is just my hobby. Ready? I do it in my Push. Spare time. Push it down. And, and fancy fingers. Get that pinky out there. Come on, ladies. One more question, then we'll probably jump to it. We'll split the video and we'll go to part two. Um, hi, Phil. Within the last few months of finding you on YouTube, I've seen your popularity just rise and rise. And yeah. I was wondering if you would, if you would like an how, oh, how are you so awesome? Like That's the question I'm waiting for now. I'm currently unemployed, not saying that I would like to be fingers, paid. Finger sniff. I have a lot of free time, and I would be more than happy to occupy my boredom helping you with anything you need doing, such as updating Cafe Press, as mentioned in your latest channel update. Weeding through emails, extracting the best <laughs> questions or anything else we could think of. Looking forward to your opinion on this. This guy's his first intern. He's, uh, this, is, this is fucking Das Bo right here. I want to be an intern, brother. You need me to, you know? Jerk you off. Check all the forums. <laughs> so what? Do you want to kind of be like my uh, my Taj to to or you'll be my Taj to me being Van Wilder? You know what I mean? Like you'll be my second in command, and that's kind of a funny proposition. Um, <laughs> honestly, if I were gonna do that, I would have to entrust someone, obviously, who I know. Uh, but I wouldn't ask someone to do it for free because obviously, if you're setting ooh, up a cash press website, if you're doing this kind of stuff, ooh. and it's it's somehow benefiting me. Whether with popularity or, or money, I would want to you know compensate someone for that. Uh, right now, I really don't feel I have a need for it. Um, oh, it's such a, a moral grandstand here. I would, I would have to pay for it. Okay. Um, like I said again, if this were something I was looking to do professionally, like I wanted this to be my job full time, like a lot of other people on YouTube, which I won't mention because they're not very talented, and I have no idea why they make so much money and why so many people watch their videos. Oh, uh, <laughs> already coping. <laughs> Already seething about other popular YouTubers and fucking like AVGN or whatever, you know? I mean, I have to say the name. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Because they're not very talented and I have no idea why they make so much money and why so many uh -huh. people watch their videos. But anyway, um, if I really wanted to put that much effort into it, then I might look for to get some people to help me out um, and form a team of people I could trust. But for now, I mean, thanks for the offer, but that's kind of a crazy uh, thing, especially for someone that I don't know. So uh, uh, thanks, but no thanks, buddy. This guy. So that's it for part that's one. That's a berate. Split this up, and then we'll start with part two. All right, part two. Last video of the night. Get hyped. Welcome back to uh, DSP's inbox. Um, part two. Uh, part one, we had some really good questions. We're actually going to get into even some better questions now, in my opinion. Oh, those other assholes sucked. We got some new ones coming up, all right? Those last guys were assholes. You guys rock. Part two, let's go. And this is, might be the better of the two parts. Um, oh, God. Because it has a lot of interesting questions and, and things that I might have some good insight on. Oh, so great. Question, I can't wait for this, this fucking insight. I actually wanted to address this one, okay? Hi, Phil. My name is Bobby, but let me... Th but oh, God! Sir... Sir, come on. We don't do this on camera. Okay. Hi, Phil. My Those name is shorts are uncomfortably tight, by the way, too. I mean, I just noticed it. Holy shit, man. This is a good one. I've been actually wanting to address Look at this. Okay. Hi, Phil. My name is Bobby. Come on. Oh, God. There's Oops. movement. He wanted me to tell everyone that his name was B-S-N-I-S-L-W. God. W. Anyway. B what? N I S L, fuck you. Anyway, fuck okay, here's guy. the question. I was That's scrolling great. the TV guy and I saw a new episode of World Cyber Games Ultimate Gamer was on, 
and uh, I didn't know I had a new season, so I decided to watch it. The first thing I see when I turn it on is Justin Wong, and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, you talk about him all the time. Then I saw him play. <laughs> you rave about him all the time. Tekken, and I was talking to my brother and saying, well, if DSP was part of this, he'd be kicking everyone's ass. Ooh. If you figure out the question by now, here it is. Would you ever consider being part of the World Cyber Games Ultimate Gamer? Oh, here we go, boys. Here we fucking go. <laughs> funny story. Oh, let's see how funny it is. I was approached to be part of that show for this season. Uh, that just not funny. funny. Honest, Dick so not. Probably wanted me over him. Um, and one of the agents. To oh, mama. They probably wanted me over him. Completely honest, if you want my opinion. Probably wanted me over him. Oh, and you're at least he said my opinion because that's the, then you can say whatever the fuck you want, <laughs> you know. But I okay. Um, and one of the agents contacted me, and I was going back and forth with him a little bit earlier this year, uh, very early in the year actually. I believe it was right about when it hit, you know, January when it became 2010. And uh, I went online and I started watching some of the episodes from last year to see what it was about. Like what person? wouldn't understand that going on a legit show would be so incredible for your channel, right? Like, I don't give a shit what's wrong with you. Make sure it happen. But let's see. I, I know this story is about to tell, but maybe you guys don't listen in. It's a good one. And honestly, I don't know. For me, it didn't look that good because... <laughs> it didn't look that good. Just searching for reasons not to do something, you know? First of all, it didn't seem that much about the games. It was like, okay... Who gives a fuck what the show is about? They want you to be on the show. Gaming, but also here, now, for the, like, they, if you're going to play, if it's a baseball game, you play the baseball game, but then they were also actually swinging baseball bats at real balls and <laughs> stuff, or... <laughs> they get baseball bats at real balls as opposed to fake balls. You know, oh, it's a real dance party, or... I think the one that really shocked me was like, all right, so there was a racing game, but then they had to get inside this Formula One replica car that was jolting them all around like this, and they had to do like a driving simulation. So f f basically, let's read between the lines. Phil went online to see what the show is all about, learned that they do things, and decided, I can't do things. Right? Let me look so hard to find the reasons I can't do something, and it's because they do stuff. And I was like, you know, if the show he wanted a TV show that just watches you pl watch people play online games. That's what he was looking for. If the show was just about gaming. I probably would have done it. I probably would have looked into it and maybe done it. But oh, what a it's genius! Not. It's about all this other shit that seems that maybe even physically taxing. And oh, physically taxing! Swinging a baseball bat, you know those physically taxing things. Driving a car, swinging a bat, dancing, ballroom dancing. Oh, yeah, those are pretty physically taxing, dude. Unfortunately, because it, it's a lot of you, most of you, I'm sure, know by now, I have a back injury. Uh -huh. I can't do a lot of physical stuff. So just for example, uh -huh. if I were in that Formula One car or whatever and it started jolting around, that could seriously injure my back. <laughs> just the wrong jolt. The wrong and again, this is not something they said they were doing at all. He was looking at old, old, you know, the old previous season, you know? Previous season, what they did, he's like... Well, they might do this thing, and uh, uh, I can't do that. Uh, my back. Come on, man. You have to do the show. Wrong way. And I could be in the hospital. I could need surgery. So, oh, God. I could be in the hospital. I could need surgery. And it sucks because here's a show that's supposed to be about gaming, but because the producer... Who decided what it's about? The producer of the show wanted it to be more than just gaming because, again... People don't know how to sell video games yet. Here we are, you know, so far into the, tw the 21st century. Video games are bigger than movies, yet still no one understands how to sell video yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, These producers yeah, think yeah. that just showing a show of video game footage isn't enough to, to basically hook people. And so they it's not. They throw all these gimmicks in. Holy and, uh, shit. I couldn't do them um, because of my back injury. This is one of the most frustrating ones. Like, And it becomes from a place where you, obviously we don't want Phil to, like, he's an asshole, so I don't give a shit. But, like, if that was like, pretend it's your friend for a second, for a second, you'd be like, dude, all of us hate you, I know, but you have to do this. If you're serious about this YouTube thing, you have to do this, dude. I don't give a fuck. And like to make him throw away so much, you know, 
Just because uh, they might be feel like they get on my back. Come on, man. Do you want to do anything? Ever? Have cool experiences? Ever? Like, ever? It sucks, and if this were like three years ago, I would have been <laughs> first in fucking line, but because of what's happened with my back, I can't do it. No, no, listen, because, okay, so, this, Whip, this, uh, this definitely would have happened. Uh, I believe this, 110 likes, dude. Likes Holy shit, street. dude. Thanks. But I believe this did happen, because, uh, he was the most popular YouTuber, gaming YouTuber there was. So, I do believe there would be, uh, interest in him. That doesn't seem crazy to me. Uh, I have, I do not think they would say, I want him more than Justin Wong or any of that other nonsense. But they would be interested in him, I think. I think they'd probably want Justin Wong more. He's an easier story to explain. But, you know, I can see them emailing him. Do it. And, uh, yeah, I know Justin Wong's on there. I knew he was on there because the number one excuse... Yeah, and it could just be sending emails. Like, all they did was tell... All, e all DSP said is that they emailed him an email. They could have sent out 100 emails to try to get eight people. I don't fucking know. But, you know, it could have been like that. So it doesn't mean that much either, right? Yeah, I know Justin Wong's on there. I knew he was on there because the number one excuse that I heard when he lost to Evo this year, that's right, when he lost to Super Street Fighter 4 to two relatively unknown players. The oh, we need to throw more shade at him? excuse was, oh, well, he hasn't been playing. He's been practicing for this World Cyber Games Ultimate Gamer. I'm going to give you a hint. Justin Wong didn't win, okay? Now, I'm not saying that because I know for a fact Justin Wong can't win a, game, a thing like World Cyber Gamers. Ultimate oh, Ultimate. Sir Wong, hope you're ready. Gamer, because Justin Wong is a person who focuses only on fighting games. The only reason he's as good as he is is because he plays the living fuck out of them. Okay, so he practices. Okay, practicing is bad. Got it. He has made it his, you know, mission since the year 2000 that he was going to spend the majority of his life sitting there and playing fighting games. And then why do you give a shit? He's made a different choice than you. It shouldn't affect you at all. And let's throw more shade at Justin for caring about something, okay? Justin cares about this, and uh, that's a bad thing, remember? Caring about stuff is bad. Keep, keep up, come on. And so, he's become the best fighting game player in the United States. You're not going to quickly learn how to do that with other games. In fact, <laughs> he can't even do it with different fighting games for the most part, especially when he fights a specialist <laughs> like me. You know, I played Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for a long time, Okay, let me just bring up his... Uh, let me tell you what me, okay? I play this game, okay? Trying to learn the game for a while, but then I start... I beat his ass every time I played him in tournament. At least, Ooh. you know, the last couple times when I was actually taking it seriously. Okay, he, nice job fixing yourself there. I beat his ass uh, at least the last couple times. <laughs> and uh, since then, he admitted, all right, you're better than me at that game. It's the same thing with these other games. These other people are going to... No, I, I want to know. I want to know if Justin Wong said, "Yeah, you're better than me at these I mean, games." He's ass at every game type, but he's fighting games. And you know, when I say that, he's pretty decent at most fighting games. He's really good at tech in the street. Decent at most fighting games. Fighter, uh, in particular. So any of those games, if they haven't played, he's going to probably well, not probably. He will dominate everyone. But anything outside of that, he's going to fail. Uh, and if he does win, it's going to be lucky or it's going to be staged. It's <laughs> oh my god. He not only thinks he can't win, he says if he wins, it will be lying or st lucky or staged. Come on, man. This is ridiculous. You, This is unheard of, Cope. Unheard of whining. If he wins, it's lucky or it's staged. But anything outside of that, he's going to fail. Uh, and if he does win, it's going to be lucky or it's going to be staged. There's no way. So... Whatever, okay. you know, the other thing I want to say, you know, Justin Wong's a good kid and all. It's a good kid and all? I believe he's one year younger than you, kid. But he's just not very interesting. I mean, he doesn't have, like, a crazy, interesting person. Okay, so, real quick, I want to reiterate. Philip said they need to be playing only games, because it's not about games, right? It's not about games enough. It's not about games enough. So, insinuating that he wants it to be all about games. But what doesn't they have to make the show interesting because he is maybe these some gamers don't have that kind of in, personality. They have to do stupid shit to show those other sides of him and personalities come out. You know, it's like you have to do that other kind of stuff to show the personalities to get them out of their, you know, comfort zones and to see get interesting TV. Oh, but 
He's just not very interesting. I mean, uh-huh. he doesn't have like a crazy interesting personality. It's funny because they made a documentary about oh, it's him funny. or something in Chinatown, you know, the king of Chinatown. Who wants to watch Justin Wong for an hour and a half? Like, I not fall asleep. Fun. I literally get a fucking Dick girl Dick like that in the theater and I go to sleep on my shoulder because he's just not. <laughs> so when you have to make a pillow metaphor, <laughs> you grab a piece of paper. <laughs> really get a fucking pillow like this in the theater and I go to sleep on my shoulder because he's just not a character. He's not. He's always been this more quiet kind of a guy. Yeah, he says things from time to time, but he's not the vocal. Yeah, he talks from time to time. Kind of person who has that kind of personality that people attract to. I honestly think I do have that kind of personality, and that's why a lot. Oh, the Chinatown documentary. I do have it. Um, We should watch it someday for sure, because that's been a part of the Density Scrolls a lot. That Chinatown fucking venue. People find me, uh, uh, you know, interesting on YouTube and why I've had such popularity. So, yeah, I think that would be a really good thing. If I had gotten on that show, I think it would have been amazing, you know, for my popularity. And also, I think a lot of people would have enjoyed it. But, unfortunately, because of but, the constraints of the show and the way that the show works, I couldn't do it. Um, no, no, you you chose not to do it. That's not this I couldn't do it shit. You had no clue what they were doing at all. You saw a fucking email. Um, so, it would be nice if someone could speak to the producers and say, hey, you know, knock on the door. What? What? So it would be nice if someone could speak to the producers and say, hey, you know, knock on the door. Hey, Mr. Producer, wake the fuck up. The game's about, or the show's about gaming, not about physical. Yeah, so Phil is, yeah, so Justin's two years younger than Phil. Activities. This isn't Double Dare where you're doing physical challenges. This is about. It's not Double Dare. <laughs> Shout outs to Mark Summers. About being the best overall gamer. You want to know the truth? I'm probably one of the <gasps> best overall gamers in the country. Uh oh. All the major games. I play them not. Super there he said the line. He Modern said the Warfare thing. Things. I was getting okay and decent at them, at least enough to know the basics and things like that. I'm really good at Street Fighter, you know, and other games like classic games. There's been uh, you know, events that they've had at like Midwest. He said the thing. Really like a- <laughs> eat, a, eat, a, eat a lunch meat sandwich. Big ups, Abdulazizi, your legend. We go. Good luck on your pool. Tournament where you have like a fighting game, a beat 'em up game, uh, a racing game. They actually had the Nintendo World Championship. Ooh, Cat Scratch uh, Fever. Classic one. The finals, I won. I won that tournament because I'm just overall pretty good at all kinds of different games. Hold on, what did he win? I won. They actually had the Nintendo World Championships uh, cartridge one year in the finals. I won. I won. They actually had the Nintendo World where you have like a fight. They've had it like Midwest Championships that I've gone to where they have. Like, oh, he won that one time. Yeah, he won the Mystery Game Championships one time. Okay, that's whatever. Random games tournament. Where you have like a fighting game, a beat 'em up game, uh-huh. uh, a racing game. They actually had the Nintendo World Championships uh, cartridge wow. one year in the finals. I won. I won that tournament. Holy because shit, I'm just dude! Overall, pretty good. They did that multiple games. years, and you won it once. Different games. I think I could take something like that World Cyber Games uh, Ultimate Gamer. Again, the problem is they don't want it all about gaming. They wanted all uh-huh. these bullshit side things that I can't do because of my physical limitations. So physical limitations. My physical limitations. That's the truth. I was approached. I turned them down. Um, and they ended up getting Justin Wong, uh, which is cool. I I wish him the best. <laughs> sounds really cool. Yeah, sounds really great. Sounds like a fucking circus. How you talked him up. He didn't fucking win, so it's kind of funny. But anyway, it is what it is. Maybe someone will grow a brain and they'll invite me to the show next season and say, instead of worrying about the physical stuff, we'll just play games. Because that's what the show should be about anyway. Then you already again, said this. If you run a show, you wouldn't have to put physical shit into it. You'd have enough things... Gaming to, to entertain the people watching, but uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Producer side, Phil. Understand that y- well. We don't have a brain. Uh, yep. A couple more questions. No one has a brain. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Hey DSP. Uh-huh. A few days ago, Ubisoft announced that Mass Effect Two will be coming to the PS3 in January of next year. I did hear about this. Okay. Um, how do you feel about this? Are you mad, glad, or do you not really care? Keep up the great videos from John from John F. Well, John. <laughs> Excuse me. You better take a sip. Another good question. Um, I guess the real answer here would be, why would I have any feeling about it? Because I've already played Mass Effect 2 and beat it. God, um, what are these shorts doing? It seems to me that every time there's some kind of announcement that a game is going cross-platform that wasn't previously cross-platform, that one side or the other just... oh. Oh, we got you, because now the game's coming to your console, or this console, or that console. Oh, and yeah, you thought you were 
we had the best system. Oh, God. Oh, now we're getting the game that, we got, you know. Oh, God. I don't, I don't understand this mentality. What is this? Mass Effect 2 came out the beginning of this year. So the game's old, okay? Anyone who wanted to play it has played it by now. Uh -huh. um, I really, really doubt there's anyone who was dying to play Mass Effect 2 who said, well, I only have a PS3. I'm not going to play it because it's not on PS3. Okay. I mean, let's face it. Gamers today uh, let's are face investing it, dude. a lot let's more face money it. and things like that into the gaming because the consoles are more it. expensive, the accessories are expensive, the games are expensive. Uh -huh. So they understand it's an expensive hobby. And if you wanted to play this game so badly, you would have went and bought a 360 mm -hmm. for 150 bucks, and you would have played it. Um, I don't think this is any giant win for Sony because they're getting Mass Effect 2. Can we just uh, move so on then? Uh, and in addition to that, I don't think they've announced really that there's any exclusivity to this release. You know, there's no nothing special that's coming out on the PS3 version that would make you want to buy that one over the 360 version. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the big deal? I don't understand. This is just like... The announcement when the Fallout expansions were coming out for PS3. So semi like be right that. here, oh, but... Oh, we got those too, see? You guys downloaded them on Xbox Live, but now we got them too. And it's like, and? Who's like, saying this, by the way? It's like just forums. I like People understand. saying shit on forums at this point. Yeah, it's already out. The game's old. It's done. It's a dead issue. Is it cool that maybe there were some people who were on the fence about it and now they'll be able to get who it? Who cares? Yeah, that's cool, but... I don't think it should be viewed as any kind of a massive coup or a win for Sony. It's a coup. Anything, it's, Sony it's a coup coup. <laughs> yeah, we're all going coup coup with the coup from the coup coup. I don't think it should be viewed as any kind of a massive coup. Or it's a, a massive coup. Sony. It's a coup de gras. Anything, Sony should be it's a coup de gras. A coup de gras. It's a coup de gras. And uh, I really don't think you're going to see any you know, significant sales, meaning like, uh -huh. anything amazing. Like Thank you. Thank you, business side, oh, Phil. Sold on the 360. Please continue your coup de gras. We're going to see maybe a quarter of that, if that. Um, Break out the so spreadsheet, I dude. I, like, yeah. I I did, I <laughs> Koo is massively I, strong. I, 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 All I can taste is Koo. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, that's a berate. Called the dude an ass. That's 10 berates. He basically called the dude an asshole. What so, was it? I don't know. I, like, I, don't, I, did, I saw people commenting um, on, on my videos and stuff about it, which I don't understand why you're commenting about that on my videos. Okay, yep, yeah, that's a berate. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Sony, Sony forever, Sony. Oh God, come this. on! Then on the other side, it was like, ah, fuck Sony! You guys had to wait so long. I, I mean, it's cool that you're getting the game. Uh, I, I say your, but I say your because I've already played the game. But um, I don't understand it. I don't think it's any kind of a significant announcement. There's, there shouldn't be any hoopla about it. I don't know why people should be any hoopla. Excited. Um, like I said, if you wanted to play the game by now, if you're really dying to play it, you thought it was the best game. It was going to be one of the best games of this year. You would have found a way to play it by now. Um, uh -huh. It's what, eight yep. months old now. So, I mean, let's be realistic here. Um, uh, I'm confused about let's that. Let's be realistic. Stop being fake, feelings. dude. Uh, do I think Sony got any big win? Absolutely not. Do I think Microsoft is losing anything? Absolutely. Didn't you already say this? How are we here still? Not, because anyone who wanted to buy, buy the game on 360 has bought it by now. You know, how many people go and buy the blockbuster game from the beginning of the year for Christmas? Nobody. Oh, come you know, on. Or maybe a few people who really, you know, Oh, God, no. There's no socks there. I do not see socks. We're in trouble. Anyone who wanted to play Mass Effect. Oh, God. Please. Point, oh, God, no. It, so. No sock. All right. Oh. Done. Um, next oh. question. Oh. This is, uh, We're in danger uh, zone. Eight more minutes. We're in the danger zone. That's all I can say. Eric Rudenia. And the question is, Hi, Phil. In some videos, you were making jokes about emo kids and them being suicidal and always crying. Oh, that's true. If you remember, sometimes I sing that song. How could this happen to me? Oh. Um, because it's really fucking emo. Um. <laughs> it's a good, simple plan. Shout outs. <laughs> How could this happen to me? I did nothing wrong. Everything right. This guy says, uh-oh. There's a song there. Well, apparently I'm wrong. He says, well, that's not true. I'm emo melting just away. Nothing else. Only emo posers are suicidal. And because of those people, others don't like us. So could you please stop making jokes about us? Thanks. Yeah, great fucking question. Let's see what he says here. Stop making jokes about people killing themselves for being emo. Well, Eric, that's just about... A typical response I would expect from a whiny, bitchy, suicidal emo. Fuck so thank you guy. very much for that message. Go slit your wrist. Fuck you. Go slit your wrist? Oh, man. Go slit your wrist.
Endorsing suicide. <laughs> I can tell why this video's not up anymore. This video's long down by now. I'm watching this on the King of Hate HD archive. Fucking legend. I'm just kidding, by the way. Um, oh, I'm just kidding, by the way. Next, uh, we have Hate Phil. Today it's August 11th, so I guess this person wrote me this, this question on August 11th. Uh, IGN announced that Duke Nukem Forever Duke would Nukem. return after a 13 Nukem. year delay. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Even I have a hard time swallowing this because you know how many times. <laughs> That's a good clip. <laughs> Even I have a hard time swallowing this because you know. <laughs> Even I have a hard time swallowing this. Yeah, I went up too far. I saw someone asking about the songs. We have all the songs here. Song playlist. Boom. How many times they made that announcement? Oh, it's coming back. It's been still in development. Oh, no. So, oh, it's coming back. No, another two years have passed. It's coming back. Like, this is the tenth time this has happened. They said that the team in charge of making the game would be Gearbox Software, the creators of Borderlands. Well... <laughs> I love Borderlands. I love Borderlands. <laughs> it sounds like an apparel store where Phil would definitely shop at with his new balance. Uh, Borderlands. I bought this at the Borderlands. <laughs> if that's the case, and the next... What is your opinion? And that's from Rachel Sandoval. Um, oh, Rachel, watch out. I'm going to Borderlands. If the makers of Borderlands make it, it's probably going to be good. Um, <laughs> because Borderlands is a really good game. And Borderlands? I can actually see them tweaking the Borderlands engine. To Stop saying Borderlands! Come on! How are you saying Borderlands this much? We have 418 Borderlands. Much of an RPG, but to be a straight-up FPS with crazy weapons, maybe the cell shading, and Please. that could be a pretty cool Duke Nukem game. Um... Duke Nukem. How do I feel at this point, and I hate to say this because I uh -oh. love Duke Nukem. I actually played Duke Nukem when it was a new series. I bet he would love it. I bet he would crack the fuck up at that, you know? <laughs> I bought a bubble gum. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome, dude. In the 90s, uh, and I mean the 3D games, obviously, not the 2D. Uh I never played the, the 2D side-scroller. And I loved it. I thought the badass attitude, the main character, the rock. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, I kind of, I kind of, uh, uh, I, I kind of... I kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of think of it as a mentor, you know? That's how I was in my life. The badass, you know what I'm saying? Music, the swearing, the gore, the new... That's the swearing. I thought the badass <laughs> attitude, the main character... The, the swearing and the gore. Meaningful, uh, the meaningful song Meerkat made is a, is a original, isn't it? Rock music, the swearing, the gore, the nudity, the weapons, the gameplay. Everything about it was amazing. It was yep, he did. It was adult-oriented, you know... Adult-oriented game? Come on. <laughs> Gameplay, everything about it was amazing. It was an adult-oriented, you know, game that was really entertaining. Adult-oriented uh, game. Uh, after the ball got dropped and it took them over 10 years developing this damn game and never came out, everyone's like, you know, at this point, would we love to see a Duke Nukem Forever fight? Whenever he says everyone's like, it shows his feelings at the moment. That's what he's talking about. I mean, that's 100% it. Finally come out, yes, but I'm so, it's just so far away from what, you know what I mean? Like, even if it comes out, it's not going to be what we were, what we wanted. You know, we wanted this game that was going to be a true sequel to Duke Nukem, and that team's gone. That team's been disseminated, fired, laid off, whatever, and it's going to be a new team of people working on this game. It's just not going to be really Duke Nukem. In my opinion... Just name it something else. Seriously. Uh -huh, Make yep. a cool kick-ass FPS game. Just name it something else. There's never Give it a cool... What? Just name it something else. Seriously. Make a cool kick-ass FPS... Cookie kick-ass? Cookie? Make a cookie? What are we making here? Really do nuke them. In my opinion, just name it something else. Seriously. Make a cool kick-ass FPS game. Make a cookie... <laughs> make a... Make a cool kick-ass. Nuke them. In my opinion, just name it something else. Seriously. Make a cool kick ass FPS game. Just name it something else. There's no reason to call it Duke Nukem Forever. I think it's Kooky Gas. It's going to have name notoriety. Kooky Gas. Nukem game. Let's face it. Let's face that, it. That, that hope is dead and buried. And, uh, it's Kooky Gas. You know, just like some other things that we wait for forever and they never come true or come to fruition. You know, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm getting laid. One day you'll make it happen, brother. And I think anyone who's really been a hardcore fan, when they finally closed the studio that was developing the game, with the Kooky Gas. It's not never coming out. So this is interesting news, but all this to me oh, is flap. the equivalent of them just That's buying a flap. name and slapping like it on the product. I really don't believe this is going to be a Duke Nukem forever, but whatever. That's how they make money, right? Slap a name on something that has nothing to do with, like, when they slapped the Final Fantasy name on that 3D movie, The Spirits Within, that had nothing to do with Final Fantasy, okay. and everyone went to see it because they thought it was a Final Fantasy movie. 
whatever. <laughs> whatever. Right. Just letting them cook there. Big ups. Big up, Super Scuffer. Towards the hat goal. Shout outs. We're getting there. Final Good luck push. in the pool. Finally, Let's yeah. see what it is. We're getting the second Latina. <laughs> That's a hype pull. No, it's been a lot of questions, but I hope you've enjoyed And if you want to know about second Latina, <laughs> she's right here. My question for you is, how do you think of some of the funny things you say during your videos? Do you write a script and think of jokes that would... Oh, God, come on. I can't handle full frontal. Every game you're playing, or do you just say things as you... Oh, God. Happen? Come on. Thanks for the question, Noah. Get this out of here, like, man. 99% of the stuff I do is... 99. ...from the hip, not rehearsed. Now, some of the things that are rehearsed are obviously... Oh, come on. ...something like that, where I'm reviewing the game and I'm saying jokes or something happens and it's scripted. Yeah. Obviously, that script. Can we please but zoom out again? What I do is completely live. My reactions are completely, uh, you know, honest and original and live and not, you know, I don't pre-play the games. That's the thing. That's really what makes me different from the other people who do these playthroughs or as people like to call them, let's plays. And let me just get this off my uh -oh. right now. I don't ever want to be called a let's player and don't Ooh. ever call me a let's player or that because I don't know what the fuck a let's player is, all right? I started doing game footage on YouTube and all... Okay, thank God he leaned in at least. All of a sudden, it became a fad to call anyone who did game footage Let's Players. Uh, how about Let's Shut the Fuck Up because I don't want to be called a Let's Whoa. Player, right? What is the problem with that? Is it... Because, like, it's he seems like he's not unique if it's a Let's Player? I do something completely original. I play the game... I give live ah, he wants to be original. I'm not like anyone else, gay dude. Shut the fuck up. I'm not like anyone else. This is very unique. See the camera? Anyone else do that? I have the camera on the fucking coffee table. Who else, who else does that? Who else has a coffee table? Do you? No. Mouth drooler. Commentary with jokes that I can make up during it. Uh, yeah, we get we know the quality of those too. Which is basically like Surround sound. Comedy, yep. Plus my reactions to what's actually going on. So for the common person to come and watch my videos, you're going to see if you're the common person go to play a game. The common person. What your reactions. I'm not a common person. What do I get then? Oh, oh, yeah. You're trying to tell us how you're not a common person. Okay, got it. How you're above us. Be like, and what's the toughest parts, the easiest parts, the funniest parts. You really get a feel uh -huh. for what the outsider would, uh, would feel. Oh, shout out to the outsider. Feel if they were playing that game for the first time, because that's exactly what I'm doing with my videos. I don't pre-play the games at all like a lot of these other people who do it. Um, it's funny because I get a lot oh, of it's funny. hate comments that say, Phil, oh, man, you suck because, you know, you don't practice beforehand. You just play and sometimes you fail so bad and miserably. You're not so funny. Bad, you're bad. You know, Different. Bad you watch and you, sometimes you die and it's like, why did I waste my time watching it? If that's your attitude, you've completely missed the point, and I'm going to tell you right now, just stop watching my video. Okay, just I'm doing it. Stop right now on this video. Don't you ever watch another video of my channel. Play again. Please that's a berate. That's a fucking berate. Number, Fuck this guy. number two, entertainment. And number three, to actually, you know, give the outsider an idea of what that game Shout is like. Shout out to the outsider. Person, not the person who's practiced the game to oblivion and can beat it in five minutes and do a perfect playthrough. You know, without ever dying once. That's not what it's about. It's about showing you what the game's honestly like. Mm -hmm. And then number four, yeah, sure, you could use my my video playthroughs as like a walkthrough mm -hmm. uh, if you're stuck on certain parts. But for the most part, it's unique. It's meant to entertain you, make you laugh, make you enjoy the game with me as much as I'm enjoying it when I play it. I hope you enjoy it as well. Uh, and that's really what it. I'm trying to do and why I'm trying to be unique here. And so, no, I never practice. Everything, like I said, is shooting from the hip. It's more like improv comedy. And We're this long about this question? Do you, do you, the question was, literally, the question was, did you, do you, do you plan shit or not? <laughs> oh, big ass, Mr. Stuff in the House says he loses his job seven days in this video. Oh, hype. That sets us up for a great episode for the next episode. I don't know if you ever watch, but if you watch some of these videos of other stuff that I do outside of YouTube, like going on vacation... I joke like that with my friends, too. We make those kinds of jokes uh -huh. all the time, and uh -huh. it's really just... Yeah, my friends. The wind, the tree over there, my lamp. You know, we make jokes all the time. Spontaneous like that, and you get good at it once you practice it. You get... And, uh, you know, spontaneous like, like that with my friends, too. Hold we on. make those kinds of jokes all the time, and it's really just spontaneous like that, and you get good at it once you practice it. And, uh, you know, when you have an... You get good at it. 
Come on, man. Who says talking to your friends and bullshitting, you get good at it? Yeah, you get good at it, you know. Something that's one of my many skills. I, th I have a certain... <laughs> I have a certain set of skills talking to people. Attitude that everything in life should be fun and, you know, you have to make the best and be positive and, 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 and basically laugh as much as you can in life. Well, you tend to find comedy in everything. And so I play these games, you know, a game like Heavy Rain. Where I just think. I think, oh, it's such a serious game. I can make a lot of fun out of it and, uh, and make it one of my best playthroughs of all time. So that's it. That's the honest truth. Everything is live and uh -huh. not you know, pre thought up or anything like that. I just shoot from the hip. I, I how many I, times can you say shoot from the hip? Live, and that's and how get I like the hip. live. That's right. Uh, you know, just like on fucking what was that entertainment tonight or whatever. We'll do it live. Um, <laughs> you have to explain so it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that was a shitload of questions, but I thought it was oh, really flap. good ones. It was worth flap it. origami. Um, and continue to send them again. DSP inbox at hotmail dot com. Yeah, I hope this answered a lot of your questions. I hope that, you know, it, it spurred some conversation here, gets things going, and uh, and that's that. So, as I said, I mean, this is, obviously, if you're watching this live, Flap. the day that this video comes out on Monday the 23rd it's like of August, um, you know, my plan's coming up. This week I'm taking a ball. Oh, I'm God! I might be doing Can we stop with the ball pinches? What is the pinch? Um, Look at this know, pinch! Pinch! This pinch! Pinch! Damn! Footage for hateful truth. Come on! Halloween special. I'm basically gonna be busy this week. Come um, on, man! Any game. So Just keep it off the camera. Metroid Other M, and then we're back to the one a week, a new game, basically. So here we go. We're into the home stretch of the year. My this clapping should have been a counter too. So much clapping. Favorite time of the year for gaming. I'm excited. I hope you enjoyed the. Got, stop the clapping! Box. Keep sending me the questions. I'll talk to you guys. <laughs> oh God, we know you gotta see this. Get up. Okay, ready? Ask the King is finished. Time to get up. Frame by frame. <laughs> Shorts riding up. Shorts falling down. Shirt tuck, the first thing we do. Why is his arm going that far back? Huh? What's that arm? It's like a gorilla walk. Hit him with it. The gout walk. Dum, dum, dun, 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 dun. It's the gout walk. All right, we're done. We are done. What a, what fun it's been. I had fun. Hope you did. Our counters. Let's get a quick check on our counters here. You know what's crazy, though? Not a single literally. Not one literally. So that's interesting. We did get 12 berates. 12 fucking berates. We got six paper flashes, and we got five funny, five not funny counters, and four bottom line bells. That's a fucking successful day. Great progress on this stream for sure. Amazing progress. All right? So you guys are all fucking legends. WPIG will be back on 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to get you ready for Hate Army, and that being said, tomorrow, what a Sunday that's planned. What a Sunday, what a Sunday, what a Sunday. But you're all fucking legends. Thank you, everybody, for the contributions as well. As always, very fucking meaningful for me. And the good part about this series is we don't have to just do this Saturday night because we got a lot of fucking ground to cover. So I might do more of these during the week, too, because uh, it's pretty cool and it's very meaningful. But you're all legends. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.